bloom, birds singing. If only the sun was out, this would be the most idyllic, tranquil place on earth. Oi! <laughs> Who the hell do you think you are? I'm Britain's strongest man. An exultant Glen Ross winning the title 12 months ago. And here at Alton Towers, once again, 30 men have assembled to try and wrest that crown from him. And one of them will walk away with this, the Citroen Van Trophy. Over the next five weeks, there'll be all sorts of humping and pumping, grinding and groaning, pushing and pulling, and a few strongman events too. <laughs> The format is what you've come to expect. Six athletes in each heat, five events, the top two will go through. So let's meet our first six. Glenn Ross from County Down, and I am the defending champion. I am Alan Turner from County Durham. I'm Adam Townsend from Northampton. I'm Fraser Tranter, Wolverhampton. I'm John Futus, Aberdeen. I'm Gary Adams, Wedding in Kent. So in heat one, these are the five tasks that our six strong men have been set. So here we go with the first of those five events, the dead weight walk. Carry this 200 kilogram weight down the course and over the obstacles. It's a kind of a strong man grand national. In fact, imagine trying to walk with Glenn Ross dangling between your legs. And your commentator as ever, is Paul Dickinson. From Bangor County Down, Glenn Ross. Yeah. From Wolverhampton, Fraser Tranter. Yeah. From County Durham, Alan Turner. Yeah. From Welling in Kent, Gary Adams. Yeah. From Aberdeen, John Futers. And from Northampton, Adam Townsend. Yeah! There's a lot of nerves out there this morning. These guys may be massive, but I can tell you they're nervous. Alan Turner, especially the oldest man in the competition. Fraser Tranter, the tallest. And Glenn Ross, the defending champion. And by far and away, the heaviest man here. 200 kilograms. Not only as much as Glenn Ross, but about the size of a small Take car engine. Down 25 metres as fast as possible. Dougie Edmonds, the referee, gets them underway. And already Glenn Ross in trouble. It's on the far side now. Adam Townsend going well. Glenn Ross coming back just a little bit. The defending champion finding life difficult here in the courtyard. Overlooking Alton Towers. There's Fraser Tranter going well. He's got height on his side. Adam Townsend, a little stumble on the far side. Fraser Tranter in second place, but it's Adam Townsend draws first blood. I think Fraser Tranter in second, Alan Turner third. And what a disappointing performance by Glenn Ross. There's the last man, John Footers. But Adam Townsend, maximum points in the very first event. 
Now, were you expecting that? Um, not really. I'm running around one of my better things, so I was hoping to get a good time on that, get some points in. Ready for one, some ones I'm not very good at. So it's a good start. Gets my head sorted out for the rest of them. It was a real hard group. Um, so I knew it was going to be tough. I knew everyone was going to be quite fast. And also you've got the defending champion in the group as well. So it was always going to be a tough um, heat. Did you know that Glenn was doing so badly behind you? I didn't. I didn't even know where I placed. I couldn't see anyone else around me. I was just concentrating on the, the course in front of me. So Good start, though. Thank you very much. Do you feel you're fighting a battle for the over 40s here? <laughs> well, I mean, at the end of the day, it, um, it's a sport that everybody thinks a young man's sport. It isn't. Put the time in, put the training in, you can do it. Why do people think that, do you think? Um, I just think once they say, oh, you get past 30 and on about peak fitness and people peaking at 22s, 23s, I just think that's a load of blowing myself because if it's in you to do it, you can do it. Simple as that, basically. Is it in you to win it? I'm going to give it a good go. It's a great start for Northampton's Adam Townsend, but I suppose the most significant thing there, Glenn Ross, back in fit. I'm going to be annoyed if we don't win the deadlift hold. I'm going to be really annoyed if we don't win the stones on the, the Swingles fingers. It's just completely built for me, so... I mean, tomorrow's my day on Sunday, so... I've got my small points there. It's good enough. Talk us through these pillars then. Well, the thing about this event is it's just pure grip. Uh, forearms and your sockets feel, your arms and your sockets feel like they're pulling out. It's hundreds of a second this comes down to, and it's just pain, pain, pain all the way through. So basically, it's how much you can take. So at the end of the day, this event is just pain. You get the picture. This should be a big event for Glenn Ross, the defending champion, who's enjoyed his year as the king of Britain's strongmen. A lot of people have recognised him more now, so in the street and that, and um, oh, he loves it, so he does. You know. It hasn't went to his head, but, you know, he does like all the, you know, people coming up and the kids saying, oh, I've seen you on TV and all that, but oh, he, does, he loves the attention, so he does. Glenn Ross absolutely adores this sort of competition. Now then, 160 kilograms in each hand. Total focus and determination, as well as an immense grip. Ten seconds. You've got to try and block out the pain, because believe me, those handles are pulling on the hands with an incredible weight. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds plus. Good effort from Glen Ross, but he needs big points in all the remaining events. Otherwise, the defence of his title is over. He's hanging on for dear life now. You can't relax in a situation like this. It's gone 35.5. We'll have to wait and see just how good that is. This was never going to be my good event. If I get middle table on this, I'm going to win the next three. I'm going to go through this first place, definitely. Well, John Foot has found it tough. Just 26.2 for him. Once it starts to go, there's no hanging on with your fingertips. It's just, it's away. It's that heavy. Once it's gone, it's gone. Alan Turner found it tougher. His arm almost came out of its socket. I felt it go straight away. It felt like tissue paper tearing. Um, but just hold on as long as I could anyway. You know, really, I should have let it go straight away, but that's not what the game's all about. You know, you still wanted to try your best. But 14 seconds, but the pain, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see if Glenn Ross's time of 35.5 is going to be good enough. Gary Adams next to go. Incredible shoulder strength, but how good is that all-important grip? He's looking pretty steady, 10 seconds gone, no problem at all there. Still Glenn Ross in the lead. Oh, and there's Granny Brenda with his young son Kai and his wife Nicola cheering on Dad. He's got a lot of support from the gym in Kent where he now works. And that's got to be an advantage, he can train there too. Heading towards 30 seconds. Gary Adams, can he make 35 and above? Can he go into the lead? It's going to be close. Oh, he's got it. He's got into the lead ahead of Glenn Ross. 36 seconds exactly. Good effort. That bar's extremely sharp. It's normally a bit, a bit looser, but it's so smoother. But it's so sharp, it just feels like it's cutting your hands to pieces. I'm pleased with that. First time I've ever done it. 
We'll just look forward to the next now. <laughs> Fraser Tranter, the tallest man in this competition, and I think ideally suited to this event. He's got enormous hands. And Douglas Edmonds, the referee, an originator of many of these contests, just asking Fraser if he's ready. He's ready. He's steady. He's gone beyond 10 seconds. Almost seven feet tall, this man from Wolverhampton. A veteran of many competitions now, and world's strongest man too. Oh, he's puffing like mad. You've got to try and relax if that's at all possible in this event. Relax and breathe. Relax and breathe, says Jamie Reeve, former world's strongest man from Sheffield. Here is a marshal. He's getting close to 36 seconds. He's gone past it. Now, Fraser Tranter was second in the previous event. There's only one man to go now, and this is good points. Don't get cocky. <laughs> I think he's actually enjoying it. He knows it's a good performance. He's heading towards a minute now. It's gone. Fraser Tranter, 53.1, and that is a terrific performance. Big points coming his way once again. Oh, it's a bit of showboating there, like you were smiling like you were enjoying it. Yeah, it's a good event for me. Um, I always enjoy the grip events, um, so hopefully that's enough to give me the full six points. So still add them to go. You can't rule him out at um, banking on that's going to be enough. So here goes Adam Townsend, last competitor. A student nurse, would you believe? You wouldn't mess with him. 21 stones in body weight, comes from Northampton. All of these guys have got a massive amount of support here. Adam competed in Britain's Strongest Man for the very first time last year. And since then, well, he's won a few contests. A lot of support for Adam, and that's his girlfriend, Sarah. He's heading towards 30. Now, the next target, Glenn Ross, 35.5. Gary Adams, 36 seconds, and he's gone. That is a big surprise, 35.7, and goes ahead of Glenn Ross by 0.2 of a second. Third, good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's still do. Keep the, the points back up again. I'm happy with that, so as long as I come in the top three in every event, that's all I'm worried about at the moment. I don't have to win them all, but it would be helpful. <laughs> the bigger the hands, the easier the pillars. Fraser Tranter way out in front there. But Glenn Ross, despite being confident, is still well off the pace, as you can see there. He's still six points behind the leader after two events. <laughs> it's great to be getting out of the family. You know, it's nice for the family to come to the like the Bolton Towers here. And this year has been a bit more stressful with Marcus being a wee bit older now and he's running about. Oh, when his daddy's out flipping his tyre, Marcus is in the backyard flipping his own tyre. Well, we think we've definitely got a strong man in the making here. Definitely. Yeah. Can you get any Fingal was the legendary figure who couldn't swim. That's why he built that giant causeway from Northern Ireland to Scotland. And these are his fingers. The lightest of them is 200 kilograms. And all the guys have to do is pick them up, push them up, and push them over. <laughs> Well, Alan Turner, just two for him, one finger, one thumb. And John Footers never got to grips with Fingal's digits. Glenn Ross coming towards us on the far side. It's Adam Townsend. Well, they've got three problems. The conditions, the grass is going to be slippery. The fingers themselves are covered in rain. It's just drizzling Thank a little bit. Up. And of course, the weight, 200 kilograms, this first one. And then they rise by 25 kilograms each. The last one weighs 300. Glenn Ross away. It's even Stevens at the moment. Leading is Alan Turner. Two fingers in 42 seconds. A 75 second time limit on this one. 15 seconds. Adam well equipped for this sort of event. Immense arms and shoulders, but balance is important. Rhythm is important, and Glenn Ross is in the lead. He's gone into the lead overall, and Adam's having all sorts of problems. 
seconds. He's just looking across to see what the situation is, and Townsend is finished. He was watching Glenn Ross, but saw the man from Candy Down had got two. Is it going to be three? Yes, it is just. That's a tremendous effort by Glenn Ross. A tremendous effort by his wife Yvonne as well, always at his side, always supporting this man who drinks, eats, breathes, sleeps strongman competitions. Coming down to 10 seconds to go now. Can he make the fourth? If he can, it would make life very difficult for Gary Adams and Fraser Tranter. He's had enough, I think. One second left, that's it. A big score, though, for Glenn Ross in very, very difficult conditions. The big man is coming back strongly. Absolutely unbelievable. Fantastic. It's the right time. We've got some heavy events in Britain's Strongest Man. It's great to see. Great to see new, fresh, heavy events. I'm looking forward to doing it again. As I will get that fourth up, and then I'll get the fifth next year. No question. Do you think anybody will beat I that? Get to the final. I'm going to go for the fifth. I think it's just a wee bit of practice. But brilliant, absolutely fantastic event. And uh, if I get some words, I'm going to eat those shoes today. I wonder if Fraser Tractor heard that. He's going to eat his shoes if he can do four. Well, there's Gary Adams too. They've seen what is required. And I think. It's going to be speed. I'm not sure anybody will do the fourth or the fifth. So speed is what it's all about now. And Fraser Tran is showing that height is definitely an advantage. He's got long, long levers. And he's going well. That is very quick for two of Fingal's fingers by Fraser Tranter. And Gary Adams is not far behind. Good effort by him. Fraser Tranter, I think, on course to beat Glenn Ross. Yes, his time is certainly faster. 30.7 seconds for three. And that is faster than the time Glenn Ross did. And Gary Adams is out. Two in 23 seconds for him. Now, can Fraser Tranter do the four? We'll have an amazing eating contest. Fraser Tranter going for the fourth. It doesn't matter. I think he's won it anyway. He has. Three in 30.7 seconds. Adam Townsend will finish in fifth place. I played it a bit clever, a bit tactical. I knew the time's going last. Get the first three done quick. The fourth one was a bonus. So I think I won the event, did I? You did. Oh, happy days. <laughs> and you're clear, so you must be thinking you're in the final. Uh, uh, yeah, but you can't count your chickens, can you? There's still another day to go, but it's looking good. While well, the fingers look like proving a pretty tough event, Fraser Tranter now two wins in three events, Glen Ross getting better, but is time running out for the defending champion if he's to make it into the final. Well, next up, it's an old friend, but with a difference. It's the car lift, or this year it's the van lift, and three of them are going head-to-head -head this time around. Each van weighs 1,200 kilograms. And the big issue in this first group is will the defending champion Glenn Ross go out at the first stage? These are the two men who can deny him a place in the final, Adam and Gary. Basically, you know, to tell me on the third day uh, that I'd have um, competed against Glenn in three events and beaten him on two, I would have taken that from you two weeks ago, no problems. So, Adam, are you looking over your shoulder at Glenn now? I'm looking over my shoulder at everybody, but, yeah, Glenn, I'm not in the rest of Glenn one little bit. He's uh, good at the holes and he's... Really good at the stones, so um, like I say, I'm not underestimating them at all. I'm not underestimating anybody I'm competing against today because they're all good lads. They certainly are. And Alan Turner in red, Glenn Ross in green, and John Futures from Aberdeenshire Strong, in white, Strong. struggling a little bit in his first Britain's Strongest Men competition. Now, Glenn Ross, seven points behind Fraser Tranter overall, and two points behind Gary Adams and Adam Townsend. The last two events, it's crucial for Ross to perform out of his skin Three. if he's going to make it through to the final. Lift. This first lift so important. They're all up. The clock is underway. Alan Turner just a little bit unsteady. John Futers finding life difficult but gaining in experience all the time. 
one of the men who becomes Britain's strongest man in the final this year will walk away with one of these vans as the first prize. Meantime, they just want to keep it at arm's length for as long as possible. Alan Turner, who's opening his own gym when he finishes this competition up in County Durham. Futures for the time being as we approach 40 seconds looking steady. Glenn Ross, steady as a rock in the middle. They're all looking pretty good as we approach 50 seconds. And this event all about immense strength in the shoulders, the arms, the lower back and in the legs. Futures just wobbling a little bit, he goes down. And so does Alan Turner. Oh, in quick succession, two of them have gone. And it only remains now to see how long Glenn Ross can hang on for. 70 seconds coming up, an immense effort from the reigning champion, the defending champion. But it's got to be. He's got to put the pressure on the three other competitors yet to go. Come on, Glenn. A massive effort. Approaching 90 seconds. Unbelievable. Jamie Reeves just having a look. He's going or is he? Oh, unbelievable by Glenn Ross. Absolutely immense effort. I've never seen anything like this. I thought he was going. He just managed to pull it up another couple of inches and he's gone. That is incredible. The medical team being called on just to look after this giant man. Who's the daddy? Well, for the time being, Glenn Ross is. No doubt about that. Can anybody beat his time? You're a, a man with a mission there, aren't you? Well, so did. I need to uh, win here to win the stones. I'm going to do it. I'm a stone monster. That really was an unbelievable effort by Glenn Ross. Meanwhile, the three remaining competitors getting strapped on 1,200 kilograms. That's a ton. Ready. Adam Townsend determined to capitalize on his position at the moment. And Fraser Tranter in the middle, seven points ahead of Glenn Ross before this event. Well, Fraser Tranter, the tallest man here, I'm not sure that's an advantage in this particular event. And this is all about the efforts of Gary Adams there and Adam Townsend on the far side. There's Gary's supporters club. If they can beat Glenn Ross in this event, I don't think the Irishman can make it through to the final. It was a phenomenal time. One minute 52 plus. Gary Adams looking a bit unsteady, a little bit unsure. His time is being shouted out and he's gone. Oh my goodness, that is a surprise. Now what about Adam Townsend? Looking pretty steady, we're approaching 50 seconds. Good points again for Fraser Tranter. The man from Wolverhampton has done well. He finishes now, 56 seconds or thereabouts, and Adam Townsend has finished too. Glenn Ross wins it. It's going to be amazing, sorting out the points going into the very last event. Tremendous effort from all three. And so it was. Glenn Ross, good to his word, he said he'd get better as the competition went along. Yeah, I've still got a chance. Um, hopefully my stone's better this year. I've been passing that well, so uh, all going well. I've a good chance, but Glenn's still close, and he won't point beyond me now. Fraser Tranter through to the final, Townsend or Ross for the other place. But Fraser's had more good news during the past 12 months. This is James, at 16 weeks old. And who's he take after? Uh, he's definitely his dad. Definitely. How many bench presses can he do at the moment? Um, not too many. I'm hoping he's going to take David Beckham's place, really, rather than strong man. How much was he when he was born? He was eight pounds. Oh, that's just tiny for you. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say he was right. a stone and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so do you think, in years to come, you might encourage him to be a strong man? No. No, really? <laughs> no. Why not? There's not enough money. <laughs> Go for football. Go for football, and if you're watching, Alex, sign him up. Well, the Atlas Stones are one of the staples of all strongman competition, and what better way to finish this group than a real shootout? One place left in the final, 
to be decided between these two men. Britain's reigning strongest man, Glenn Roth, and Adam Townsend. Good luck, guys. And as John said, it's all come down to this. A battle of the heavyweights to see who goes through to the final and joins Thank Fraser you, Tranter. Five stones, the lightest 110 kilos, 17 stones, the heaviest 150, and nobody's lifted that yet. This is all about speed, it's all about determination, and it's all about immense strength as well. Oh my goodness, that is big problems for Adam Townsend. Ross is clearly ahead. Well, neither of these guys are particularly tall. Fraser Trent, remember, about seven foot tall. So they've got to push this stone up onto their shoulders and then onto the wall. And Adam Townsend struggling at the moment. This is desperate. He's had four very good events. Glenn Ross on number three, and he's having problems now. He'll be desperately disappointed if he doesn't make it through to the final. The defending champion. All the great champions say it's all very well winning a championship, but to defend it is doubly difficult. Adam Townsend safely with a third. Glenn Ross going for his fourth. Now, can he do it? If he can, it might all be over. He's dropped it. Now Adam Townsend's got a real chance. His girlfriend shouting support. Glenn Ross getting a bit of stick from his wife. Adam Townsend, if he can do this, he's beaten Glenn Ross, surely. Glenn Ross in the lead over the third one, but Adam Townsend has dropped it as well. That is it. It's all over. Oh, my goodness. Adam was inches from beating the defending champion, but Glenn Ross, I think, has done enough. Tremendous efforts by Adam Townsend. So, so close. And consolation for his girlfriend from Glenn's wife. It was two good men up against each other, and I really feel for Sarah. Adam's girlfriend, you know, like we're all very close here, all the wives and all the girlfriends, and we root each other, all, all our husbands and boyfriends on. It's just, you, I'm on a high note, but you know, you feel sorry for all the other competitors, but the best has to go through. And when Glenn dropped that fourth ball, did you think, I've got a chance here? Um, I did when I got it almost upon the wall, but if I could just get into it, I've got it. But it slips, so that's the way it goes, isn't it? How disappointed are you? Uh, very, because it was so close. I dropped the first stone, I thought that's it. And I was seeing Glenn on the fourth, and I was on the fourth. I was like, yeah, I could have it. That's the way things go, isn't it? Do you think you sort of snuck in through the back door, Glenn? Well, I just want to say... Excuse me. I had a fantastic fight. And I hope I go on and win it for you. Cheers. I do, honestly. Well, a great win right at the end there for Gary Adams, but Glenn Ross had done just enough. And so it's he and Fraser Tranter, the big man from the black country, who make it through to the final of the Citroen Van Trophy. So the first two men are safely through to the final, but even though Fraser's obviously in very good form at the moment, I just can't see him winning. I mean, he's just ridiculously tall. <laughs> Well, if John can recover from that, he'll be back for Heat 2 tomorrow on BBC One at the later time of 10 to 7. Next tonight, the other half.
And this time, these are the five challenges awaiting our six strong men. First event, carry this 200 kilogram weight all the way down the course over the obstacles, first one to the end wins. And having seen the first heat, it seems pretty straightforward to me, so I thought I might have a go. Commentary from Paul Dickinson. From Spennymoor in County Down, Steve Brooks. Yeah! From Worcester, Russ Bradley. Yeah! From Wallingborough, Mark Eiley. From Renfrewshire, Mark McKechnie. From Worcester, Sebastian Abatiello. And from Ludlow, Lane Snook. Three first-timers in Britain's Strongest Man in this heat. Mark Eilif, Mark McKechnie and Lane Snook. Russ Bradley there, former Britain's Strongest Man and Steve Brooks. He was second to Glenn Ross in the final last year. All six determined to get off to a very, very fast start. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, good. No margin for error whatsoever here and it's Russ Bradley who's got off to the biggest start. Lane Snook on the far side, six feet seven tall, 300 pounds. Oh, and Steve Brooks has got a problem. Lane Snook is running away with it. Two more steps to go for victory. Russ Bradley coming up quickly and Steve Brooks, but Lane Snook, his very first Britain's Strongest Man competition, and he's won it. Russ Bradley in second place and Mark Eilif in third. Tremendous effort by him. Big disappointment for Steve Brooks. Second last year, but only fourth in this opening event. Now come on Mark McKechnie, he's finished, but this event was all about a runaway victory. Lane Snook, 17.7 seconds and maximum oh, points, tremendous effort. You made that look almost absurdly easy. It wasn't too bad, I'll do it again, but uh, if I was pushed, it wasn't bad at all. Uh, uh, but you were almost running at one stage. Uh, it doesn't make you a bad person. I didn't find it too bad, I wanted to put it up. You know, it stayed in tight. I was kept going. How were you expecting to do in that? I weren't sure. I was a bit nervous about it, never having done it. I didn't know what to expect and it's 200 kilo weight. It's a fair amount of weight to go up and down the steps but like I say I found the steps all right but I was pleased with third anyway. Disgraceful. I'm ashamed of myself. I was in wet conditions. I was trying to go too quick. I don't know. I should have won that. Just a four mile like that. But so first blood to Snook, but the main news, the return to form of Russ Bradley, nearly a year and a half after suffering a bad injury at World's Strongest Man. Didn't train for like 15 months. Hospitals, osteopaths, all the rest of it. Slow build up. And it's an absolute pleasure to be involved, to be back at this level. So, No pain, pain, no nothing? A little bit of pain, but I enjoy it. Two big barrels. What are, you, what are you expecting this to be like? Painful. <clears throat> um, I've never done it before. I've asked the lads and they say the pressure on your hands is great and across the top of your shoulders. So uh, I think it's a question of just getting stuck in and hanging on. How much fun are you expecting this to be? I don't know. It's how it goes. Second by second. You know, I might leap off the stage laughing and joking, begging to have another go. But I doubt that's enough. Sebastian Abatiello, a veteran of all sorts of strongman competitions. Actually, Italy's strongest man, once upon a time, and has uh, appeared in all Are sorts of feature yes. films. No. He's quite an all-rounder, is Seb. Yes. He needs big points, yes. though. Abatiello, yes. three points from event yes. one, so if he's got any hope at all of going through to the final, He's got to hang on for as long as possible to these 150 kilogram barrels. 330 pounds each they weigh. And it's all about grip. We had the Pillars of Hercules last week. This is a variation on that event. But exactly the same sort of torture, and he's gone. 32.5 seconds. A good effort from the man from Worcester. 
How hard was that? Very, very hard. It's heavy, very heavy. How about the mental thing about keeping it, you know, shouting and at yourself? Are you shouting at yourself, at the world, or at nothing in particular? At myself, to do it, basically. Uh, the most important thing is getting your grip at the beginning. If you don't get it right at the beginning, you won't have a long time. It was, it was OK. Not as good as I was hoping, but I'll keep the fingers crossed. See how it goes. For Mark McKechnie from Renfrewshire, it was proving tough once again. And for the pride of the North East, Steve Brooks, another disappointing performance. Look up, please. Are you ready? Hold on. No! Dr. Douglas Edmonds, the referee, just making sure Mark Eilif is set. And look at the stretch that's going on across his shoulders. Well, during his day job, this guy is a Formula One racing car engineer. I bet he's never encountered anything like this. He's come into strongman quite late in his life. There's wife June and Mark Jr., his son, cheering on Dad. Bit of support from that elbow bandage. Oh, the effort required in this event. As much mental as physical. 32.5 to beat, and he's done it! Yes, he has, by the skin of his teeth. Good effort, and he takes the lead. Oh, good. Well done. Brilliant. He's doing well so far. It's his first year he's doing it, so it's a bit nerve-wracking. But... Show us those hands. It's, it's pulled all the skin hard there. That's the worst bit. It's the, the knurling on the handles are really, really rough. It's not so much the weight pulling on your hands, it's the knurling. It grabs your skin and it really, really, really is painful. I don't know what it's done yet underneath the chalk, but I'll have to have a look, but it's gone very red. And... Yeah, it's quite hard, that, though. Quite heavy. In the lead, though. I'm... In the lead? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I think Mark Eilif was being very polite when he said it was quite heavy. It's very, very heavy, and Russ Bradley ready? knows it. Well done. No. Well, former World's Strongest Man finalist, coming back from injury, he missed most of last year, but he's coming back well. He knows he's about six or seven months short of the sort of form he'd like to be in, but it's great to see the former Britain's Strongest Man back. You're doing well. He certainly is, says wife Caroline. Now then, the time he's got to beat, 33 seconds. Two-thirds of the way there now for Russ Bradley. Needs big points here. Second in event one. Couple of seconds to go. Can he do it? Yes, he can. He's got into the lead, but only just 34.6. But Russ Bradley once again, I think, guaranteed some very, very useful points. He might be short of training, but he's still in very good shape. That was good. I didn't realise, actually. I thought he came second or third then, but, yeah, it's practice. That's what it is, practice. That felt so comfortable. There was no pain, didn't feel heavy, nothing. There was a little bit of a jerk at the start, and I knew the left hand was going to go, and he just, he just stood there thinking, will it go in the next three seconds, will it go in the next six seconds? And it went. The right hand could have stayed there all day. I was a little bit disappointed, but it's in the lead so far, so fingers crossed. Well, Lane Snook didn't walk off the stage laughing and begging for more. And that meant that Russ Bradley, no problems with his back there, was the winner, with Steve Brooks in yet more bother at the bottom. Are you starting to get a little bit worried about how things are? I am, certainly. Um... That's not a good event for me anyway. Jude's always a bad event, I've only got small hands. But, um, there's another three, I've got to win the last three. And uh, I'll try my very, very best. Well, this looks like being a keenly contested heat. Could Mark Eilif, in his first Britain's Strongest Man, be an unlikely finalist? He's Mark Jr. named after me because he was um, £10.6 born. Um, so he's a big lump when he was born. When he watches me and Bill on that train, he comes around and picks up like empty barrels and starts counting her belt. Yeah. Was your barrel harder? You're tired, Come on! Would you like to be a strong man when you're older? No. That's it, mate! Oh, that was a good 
good news and bad news. These are two railway sleepers battened together, weighing 500 pounds or a quarter of a ton. The good news, they don't have to carry it. The bad news, somehow they've got to flip it all the way from this end of the course to that end. Russ Bradley. And Mark Eilert. For the men who are lying in first and second equal place, that is Mark Eilert on nine points with Lane Snook, but Russ Bradley two points in the lead from the first two events. 500 pounds, that's 230 kilograms. And conditions rather like they were last week for Fingal's Fingers. It's wet underfoot and the equipment is soaking wet as well. One or two concerns before this event started about safety, but the competitors have said, we're going to go for it. Now, Russ Bradley in the lead at the moment. Mark Eilip a little bit behind him, perhaps half a flip. Both of them have got gloves on. It's all about strength in the legs, the lower back, and the arms and the shoulders. It's all round strength and endurance. You've got to be a real athlete to do this one. Gregor Edmonds standing behind Russ Bradley for safety, as is Jamie Reeves standing behind Mark Eilip. They'll be giving these guys some encouragement too. Russ Bradley exhausted. Mark Eilip may just be catching him. Push it forward, says Jamie Reeves. Now come on, Russ. The distance will be measured if they don't finish the course. They're running out of time. We'll add down to the last 10 seconds. It's so, so close. Russ Bradley flips his over. It looks about level, neck and neck. Russ Bradley absolutely exhausted, but a tremendous effort once again by both Mark Eilip and Russ Bradley on the comeback trail. Like a, it was like a head-to-head -head race, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, quite difficult actually. It's, I think the wood soaked up some water um, between competitors, and it is very, very heavy. And on that last one, I was a bit very disappointed with that, really. I should have finished that course quite easy, but the last one, just nothing left in my arms to, to press it or anything. Were you watching him? I was, I was aware of his position, yeah. I, I actually thought he'd, he'd beat me. Um, but that, that sapped a lot out of me. As I said before, I'm coming back. The raw power's not back yet, leg power's not back yet, but it's, I'm surviving it. If I can get into the final, it'll be, it'll be a huge bonus. Well, this was not the ideal platform for Seb Avatiello, just 11 metres he managed. Lane Snook, though, much better for him, into the lead, 15.9, but no one's completed the course yet. Well, Steve Brooks on the far side there, contemplating the possibility of going out of this competition. He's got to win this one. Mark McKechnie, his first Britain's Strongest Man Thank competition. You, Not going too Thank well you, so Brooks. far, but learning with every event. <laughs> Brooks has got to win. Lane Snook, the surprise leader. And Lane Snook, of course, won the very first event here. Steve Brooks is going well. Now watch his arms and shoulders. They're packed full of muscle. He weighs about 21 and a half stones. That's about 140 kilograms. Hardly any fat on him at all. Mark McKechnie, another 20 stoner. Some way behind Steve Brooks. His wife is on the sidelines shouting and screaming at Steve Brooks. Second in the final last year behind Steve Brooks. Three events to go. We're coming towards the end of the third, and I think Steve Brooks might finish this one. If he can, he's going to win and take six points. Magnificent by Steve Brooks, but he's still got a lot of work to do. Those massive shoulders have still got to produce something magical. Mark McKechnie in danger of taking last place. McKechnie finding life very, very tough. I think he's finished. The Scott finishes his event outside the time limit but it doesn't matter Steve Brooks has done it and how important is it having someone screaming in your ear the whole time <laughs> the slop was better before I went on <laughs> you smacked him did you oh yeah Face, did you? <sighs> were you in were you were you in such a zone that you couldn't hear her or did you know that she was there screaming and shouting no I heard her this time not only I don't hear her well I think it was she was so close, it helped a bit. Well, the last few events has made us a bit angry and anxious and nerve wracking, and you know, 
Did you give him a bit of stick after the first two events? Yes. A lot of stick. So a smack from the wife and Steve Brooks takes the third event, but he still has an awful lot of work to do. He'll need two more good performances if he's to close the gap on the strong men ahead. Surely too much to do, the prospects looking bleak. Well, this year the car lift has metamorphosed into the van lift and three of them are going head to head. Each van, as you can see, weighs 1,200 kilograms. And the big question in group two is which two of these three men will make it through to the final? Now, you're two and a half points down from the leader. How do you view this? I've just got to hold on for as long as I can, really. And that's it. I've never done it, so it's giving me the best shot. No, I'm just going to try and pick it up and hang on. That's all I can do, really. Well, I do feel quite relaxed and reasonably confident for this event. And um, just going to go in there and give 100% and see what happens. Well, we'll see Russ Bradley and the other two in a little while. Meanwhile, it's Sebastian Abatiello, Mark McKechnie on this side, and Steve Brooks, the winner of the last event, right in the middle. Well, as we've seen with this event, determination counts. Ten seconds. Perseverance counts. An immense strength in the shoulders, the arms, the legs, and the lower back counts as well. We had a phenomenal time seconds. by Glenn Ross in the last program. In this event, 1,200 kilograms. There's Lynn, Steve Brooks' wife. Well, we've heard that she gave him a bit of stick before and after the last event. Rather her than me. Steve Brooks, though, has got to win these last two events to have any chance. A Battiello, well, an immense performance here. Could improve his chances of making his very first final a reality. McKechnie a little bit off the pace. Steve Brook, oh, McKechnie has gone. Mark McKechnie just about 50 seconds. Abatiello's hanging on. A good performance by him. One minute. Steve Brooks looking fairly composed, if that's at all possible. And Abatiello is finished. The man from Worcester, a very good time. Over one minute. Now, what has Steve Brooks got left? Still three very good competitors to come. He's got to hang for as long as possible. Tremendous support for Steve Brooks here at Alton Towers. He's not gaining on Glenn Ross's time of close to two minutes, but that is phenomenal. Steve Brooks, 89.2 seconds. Absolutely brilliant. How tough was that last 20 seconds there? Very. I need to pass out. <laughs> I guess you I need it, so... Ooh. It's more... Mind over matter the last... When I heard Seb drop it, I was about ready to go myself. Like I say, I need the points, I need the win. Hopefully, a bit of luck, I might get it. So our next three, being told to lift. Bradley and I lift up, and Lane Stuck can't do it! He's given up! And that is a desperate situation for Lane Snook, but great news for Steve Brooks. Russ Bradley, the overall leader, 14 and a half points. Mark Eilif in third place. But what about Lane Snook? He'll only finish with one point, and Steve Brooks will almost certainly go ahead of him after this event. Now, Russ Bradley, he said all along he's not in great shape, but he seems to be getting stronger with every event. Mark Eilif, the first time we've ever seen him on Britain's Strongest Man, and he's been so impressive, but he's finished now, 38 seconds, seconds. and that is again good news for Steve Brooks. Russ Bradley struggling just a little bit, and he's gone as well. Oh, well, as far as Steve Brooks is concerned, it couldn't have been better. He's beaten all his main rivals, and that is his second win in a row. So Steve Brooks, a man on fire in this heat, but Lane Snook was actually choosing to save his energy for the final event. What it means, though, is that Brooks has been catapulted into second place with one foot in the final. And so we come to the final event, the Atlas Stones. Five massive boulders from 95, 105, 115, 125, 135 kilograms that have to be lifted onto that wall behind me. I'll tell you what, though, you wouldn't want to have two of these between your legs. Take your position. Lane Snook on the far side. Mark Eilif on this near side in the red vest. Inexperienced as far as this classic strongman event is concerned. Ready. 
all five in the fastest possible time. We haven't seen anybody do it in the previous program, but what a way to finish five grueling events. Mark Eilif by far and away the shortest of these two. Lane Snook is about seven inches taller. Both have completed one each. I think Mark Eilif slightly the faster. Lane Snook gets the second one on, and he's moved ahead of Mark Eilif. Two debutantes in Britain's Strongest Man, but two names to watch out for in the future, that's for sure. Now, what can Lane do? Whoever wins this particular pairing will set the target for the rest, and that is what Steve Brooks will be watching very, very carefully from the sidelines. This, the stone which weighs 125 kilos, 19 stones in weight, that's about the same as a refrigerator that's full of a weekend shopping. Absolutely massive and very, very awkward to lift as well. They're running out of time. We're inside the last 10 seconds and Lane Snook has done it. A fabulous effort. So he will set the target for the rest. Mark Eilif, a good finish once again by him. But Lane Snook, magnificent right to the end. And that is a very tough target for the rest. Might be a bit early to say, but maybe the tactic of uh, opting out of the last one might pay dividends now. I wish I'd opted out of that one too. That was nasty. She was, uh, went my way in the end. Which uh, had some trouble to fall for getting off the ground. But uh, pleased with that. Hey, you put the pressure on the other two guys, haven't you? I mean, they, they, one of them's got to get four. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. We'll see. Who knows what might happen. Steve Brooks and Oh, my goodness. Steve Brooks getting a bit of stick from Lynn, his wife, there. Just wait till I get you home. Russ Bradley on this side. Steve Brooks with his back to him. Brooks said he's got to win the last three events. He's won two of them so far. Russ Bradley coming back into form. So, Steve Brooks will have seen what Lane Snook did. He'll be very conscious of the fact he's got to do four to beat Lane Snook and go through to the final. Russ Bradley, too, can't afford to relax too much. Mark McKechnie, we haven't seen him, but he lifted three stones, and that was a good effort by him. So providing Russ Bradley does three or more, he's pretty safe. Lynn is getting agitated on the sidelines. Russ Bradley in the lead. Steve Brooks taking it steady. This man is solid muscle. Bradley, full of grit and determination. Brooks, hot on his heels, but Bradley gets four. An incredible effort. Now then, what has Steve Brooks got left? Nobody's done five in either of the two programs we've seen so far. This one will take him through to the final, and he's got it! Steve Brooks has done it, Russ Bradley has finished. And now the Brooks family can afford to celebrate after so much doubt earlier in the competition. Russ Bradley has made it too. What a phenomenal way to finish. Did you ever entertain the thought of going out at the group stage? Yeah. Uh, we had a bad few nights uh, in the hotel, me and my wife, which is heads down. I think we up there has tested us this way. Yeah, uh, I've pulled it out. So, pretty happy at the moment. I can imagine. And Russ, very consistent all the way through. You must be delighted to get um, the final. Where's the nearest pub? It's a dream come true. Didn't expect it. These guys are a lot better than me at the moment. I've slipped back a bit. I'm slowly clawing my way back. It's a pleasure to be able to, to compete at the same level for Steve, Glenn Ross. I want to see the other lads. Um, I'm just going to relax and enjoy the final now. I didn't think I'd make it. Kept battling away. And uh, sure enough, I'm there again. Sure is. In the end, the two strongest men came out on top. Lane Snook and Mark Eilif, the newcomers, just missing out. And from appearing out for the count, Steve Brooks makes it through in second place alongside Russ Bradley. And so Tranter, Ross, Bradley and Brooks are the men through to the final of the Citroen Van Trophy. 
So four men now through to the final, and after that long layoff with injury, good to see Russ Bradley back in form. But you know, he's got no chance of winning. I mean, how can Britain's strongest man have strawberry blonde hair? Heat 3 is next Sunday on BBC One at 7 o'clock. In a moment tonight, Auntie's sizzling new summer bloomers with Terry Wogan. So the gardens here really are, are awe-inspiring, and the range of trees is truly magnificent. I mean, this, this cedar is, what, 200 years old? Yes, that's right, 180, 200 years old. Fine example of cedar of Barney. The trouble with it is, though, it tends to overhang this canal a little bit too much. If you could get, what, half a dozen huge guys, just rip it out by the roots, move it six foot over there, that would be fine. I think I might be able to sort that out. Well, we're heading towards the halfway point now in this year's Britain's Strongest Man competition for the Citroen Van Trophy. Four men have made it through to the final already here at Alton Towers. A further two will join them today. Here, in the most peaceful of settings, raw power. Here's the format, six athletes in each heat, five events. The top two only go through to the final, and these four have made it already. Fraser Tranter from Wolverhampton, Glenn Ross from Bangor, Russ Bradley from Worcester, Steve Brooks from the North East, who'll join them from this heat. I'm Jamie Barr from Fife. I'm Rob Dixon from York. I'm Adrian Rawlinson from Dudley. I'm Paul Banks from Slough. I'm Martin Campbell from Northern Ireland. And I'm John Kiss from London. Six strong men, these are the five Herculean tasks that await them. Well, the first event is fairly straightforward. They have to carry this 200 kilogram weight between their legs all the way down the course over the obstacles. First one to the end wins. And if 200 kilograms doesn't sound like much to you, well, listen, it's the combined weights of Adrian, his wife Helen, both their sons, Thomas and Jack, their four goldfish, and their pet canary, Willie, who was here a few moments ago, but Commentary comes from Paul Dickinson. From Fife in Scotland, Jamie Barr. From York, Rob Dixon. From Slough, Paul Banks. From Dudley, Adrian Rawlinson. From Hayes, John Kiss. And from Bushmills, County Antrim, Martin Campbell. Jamie Barr on this side, former competitor in World's Strongest Man competition. Martin Campbell, whose big hero is Glenn Ross, the defending champion who's already gone through into the final. Adrian Rollinson there, the biggest man. Rob Dixon, all fire and fight. 
right next to Jamie Barr. 25 metres they've got to cover in the fastest possible time. So important to get off to a quick start. Thank you, Bill. Take your grip. Douglas Edmonds gets them away to a start. And on the far side, going well is John Kiss in the yellow. Jamie Barr going well. Rob Dixon is coming away. One of the shortest men in this competition. Oh, he's absolutely blowing away the opposition. And he's got it. Rob Dixon wins it. I think it's Jamie Barr in second place. Just ahead of John Kiss there. What a phenomenal start by Rob Dixon. Adrian Rollinson just finishing now, along with Paul Banks. That's Rollinson. Paul Banks just picking up a single point, but it's six points, a big six points for Rob Dixon. Were you expecting to win that? No, not at all. Um, not really normally a good event for me, isn't that? So, running next to Jimmy Barr really spurred me on. I saw myself in front of him and I didn't get too excited. Cause I didn't want to drop it. I've been renowned to drop them before, but I was very, very pleased with that. I would hope for top three, so that was brilliant for me, anyway. When you saw Jamie sneaking up on you as you were coming towards the final steps, did you start worrying a bit? I never saw him sneaking up on me. I'll be honest with you, I never really saw him sneaking up on me. You say he was, so that's a fair comment, but I never saw it. If I did do, I would have probably worried. As, as a seasoned campaigner as you are, <laughs> is, is the sole intention here just to qualify for the final, really? Well, obviously that's your first... You can't even start counting your chickens how I'm going to be in the final. You've got to just get on with it, make the final, and see what you're going to do when you get there. Don't want to peak too soon, then, do you? No, you have to try and do enough to get there, but no, no showboating and wasting energy. How do you rehearse or how do you train for carrying something of that magnitude between your legs? <laughs> <laughs> you don't really. It's just I've been just working my fitness. It's hard to get hold of equipment because you never know what the events are. So you've got to improvise and just work on fitness really and strength. How, how, how hard was it? It was pretty easy, it was just... I think I got the momentum too fast and slipped and... <laughs> yeah, no, but... I tell you, it's a good job you didn't drop it on your foot. <laughs> no, I'm careful like that. Rob Dixon, small is beautiful. And what of the protégé of Britain's strongest man, Glenn Ross, Martin Campbell? What did he make of it? Great one. <laughs> It's very harder, it's a lot harder than I am strongest man, which I noticed here already, like, weights is a lot heavier, boys are bigger and stronger, but I'm only 25 and I hope to improve, which I have done in the last couple of years, I know now I'll improve even more, I was training a bit with Glenn. So talk us through this then. Oh well, I've, I've done it once before and uh Last time I done it was different to this, but it felt like my hands were going to pull off. But it's just a matter of gri gripping it and holding on for dear life. <laughs> you know, as long as you can. I couldn't have described it better myself. Paul Banks, who lives and trains in Slough. 160 kilograms each. That's about 25 stones in each hand. Adrian Rollinson is the biggest man in this event, and he only weighs 23 and a half stones. So here we go. Banks needs good points. They all need good points. The weather has finally blessed us here at Alton Towers. We've got a magnificent crowd as well. The strain across the shoulders, the biceps, the triceps, and of course in the hands. Absolutely terrifying. Heading towards 30 seconds for Paul. And it's this point where they all say, you've got to block out the pain. I don't know how they do it. Towards 40 seconds, and he's gone. 38.8 seconds. That is a good result for Paul Banks. Hopefully that should put me up there a little bit, so... A bit happier now. <laughs> and that hurt. Where? I did it in the ends. But, I don't know, I can't explain it, but you go and have a go, mate. <laughs> I think if John tried it, he'd end up with arms about seven and a half feet long. Anyway, Adrian Rollinson is the next up. The biggest man here in this heat, six feet three, 23 and a half stones. Adrian Rollinson needs good points here as well. 
just concentrating, settles himself. You're not allowed to bend the legs too much, so Jamie Reeve and the other judges will be having a close look at that. The effort spread across the arms and the shoulders. That's his wife Helen and sons Tom and Jack. These guys, well, they live, breathe, eat, sleep, strongman competition. When they're not sleeping and eating, they're training. It's an incredible regime they have to put themselves through. And that is a good effort by Adrian Rollinson. He's gone into the lead, ahead of Paul Banks. 40 seconds, a cracking time. I, mean, I am usually good at that sort of event, but uh, I'm pleased with the time. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. Do you think anybody else will beat that? I don't know, there's two good fellas in there to come yet. So, I'm hoping he's good enough to take it, but uh, we'll see. But these obviously weren't the two he was concerned about. Martin Campbell still learning the trade. And for John Kiss, just the 13 and a half seconds of absolute torture. So here go the top two after the first event. The first we're going to see Rob Dixon. In some ways, the surprise winner of that first event. He weighs about 20 stones of solid muscle, but he's by far and away the shortest in this heat. A real fiery little character. Now, the time he's got to beat, Adrian Rollinson's 40.8 seconds. And that really is a good time by Rollinson. Oh! Absolutely grimacing with pain. There's Tracy with his son. Oh my goodness, come on now, Rob Dixon, he's gone. 23.5 seconds, and for the time being, he's in third place, but still Jamie Barr to come. How, uh, how bad was the pain towards the end there? Oh, it was quite bad from the start, actually. You know, it was a hard event for me. Uh, I'd expect it to be hard, but not quite that hard. I thought I might have been able to pull a few more seconds out, but uh, well, it's time to go, it's time to go, unfortunately. You know, I'll give it all I could give. I couldn't give any more, so I did what I could do. I thought your face was going to explode at one point. <laughs> yeah, I'm renowned for having a red face, yeah. Blood pressure's all right, but I've got a red face, so... Yeah, it matches the T-shirt, doesn't it? Well, thank goodness Jamie Barr's face doesn't match his T-shirt. The last competitor. He knows precisely what he's got to do. 320 kilograms plus here. Over 600 pounds, the pressure on the arms must be unbelievable. Keep breathing, Jamie, keep breathing. Jamie Reeve, Britain's former world's strongest man, saying to Jamie Barr, keep breathing, keep breathing. Marvellous, just relaxing. Jamie from Fife in Scotland, third in last year's Britain's Strongest Man final. He's trying to get to 40 seconds, trying to go past 38 of four banks as well, and he hasn't done it. 33.5 in third place, and that means Rob Dixon goes back to fourth. Big points for Adrian Rollison in the second event. How competitive do you think the, this, this group is? Well, it's good. We're all shouting for one another. Everybody's helping one another all, and that's what it's all about. Good sportsmanship. You get beat, you get beat by the better man. There's no complaints, sir. Eh? There's no babies in this group. Adrian Rollinson certainly no baby. His 40.8 was good enough to take first place there. And this is a very tight group, just one point separating the top three. But Rollinson's having a good time. Hello. My He's a brilliant Hoover. Loves to get the Hoover out. <laughs> Moves all the ferry to put me to shine. Oh, well, yeah. You need too much on polishing now, but he just like to Hoover. Oh. Eat. You can eat for England. Oh. Do you know, there's never any scraps left in our house at all. He <laughs> blames all the children for eating the chocolate and he gets more. He's really, really grinding. <laughs> he is. Really big socks today. <laughs> you never got your best side. <laughs> Well, this next event is a brand new one, and it's derived from the legend of Fingal, who built the Giant's Causeway from Northern Ireland to Scotland. These are his five fingers, ranging from 200 kilograms to 300 kilograms. And with fingers like tree trunks, just imagine what his thighs were like. And you know what they say about guys with big fingers? 
big thumbs. It's still proving hard work for Martin Campbell. Two fingers in 43.7, and only two for John Kiss, but look at that time, 22.7. The two equal first places, Jamie Barr first of all, and Rob Dixon at the far end of the stadium. Nine points each. There's only two points covering the first three competitors. Adrian and Rawlinson on eight points. Now the first of these fingers, 200 kilograms, 440 pounds, and conditions difficult for this event. It's rather slippery, so safety is of paramount importance. Jamie Barr ahead of Rod Dixon at the moment. This next one, 225 kilos. We're knocking on towards 500 pounds now. Rob Dixon, come on, just push it up a little bit extra. Jamie Barr is on the third one, 250 kilos. And Rob Dixon finding this a struggle. His face has definitely gone a deeper shade than when he started. Now, Jamie Barr is struggling as well. He can rest it on his shoulder. If neither of them get all five up, the time at which they produce their best effort, and in both cases, it's their second, will count towards the final score. Jamie Barr, 23.4 for two. He's in second place behind John Kiss. That, I assume, was a, a tactical decision not to go for the third one there. Right, because I just... I've got the same points as Rob, so that means I, the, my second one was faster, so I'm a point in front. So it's all about getting to the final without killing myself. I just hope it works. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Now it's down to Adrian Rollinson and Paul Banks here. There's Adrian. They will have done their calculations. They know exactly what they've got to do. Nobody has lifted three so far. So here goes Adrian. Very tall, that will give him an advantage over Paul Banks and the rest, and that is a quick time for both men. In fact, this is very, very quick. Adrian Rollinson, I think, is going to go into the lead. He certainly has gone ahead of John Kiss, and, of course, Jamie Barr. Paul Banks going well, too. By far and away, Paul Banks' best effort so far. This stadium is really coming alive. Fantastic support for all of these guys. Adrian Rollinson close to doing three. He's done it. He's taken maximum points again. Paul Banks is finished, but it's still a very, very good time. He's going to finish in second place. Well, Glenn Ross said in the first program, if anybody can do four, he'd eat their shoes. <laughs> now, come on, Adrian. That would certainly be something worth watching. Rollinson is flying. Just a couple more degrees. He's running out of time. With that of five seconds, it doesn't matter. Rollinson is going to be in the lead after this event. Absolutely perfect for the finish. That was good. That was excellent. I put my top on the second day, so well tomorrow. The so another win for the big man from Dudley and he certainly is eyeing a place in the final now but this heat is very tight indeed he's got 14 John Kiss in fifth has got nine Well, this group really is fascinating. Any two of five can go through to the final, and this van lift might be crucial. Three of them going head-to-head -head at a time, each van weighs 1,200 kilograms. So assuming they all think they're going to go through to the final, who's going to go through with them? Answer? Big Adrian over there. Big Adrian over there. Yeah. And you say? Big Adrian. Big Adrian. And you say? Big Adrian. Big Adrian. My oh, mum. Your mum? <laughs> My good friend there. Yeah. Your good friend there. And Martin, what about you, mate? Why not do that? Better luck next time. <laughs> yeah, that's sad, isn't it? <laughs> well, Martin Campbell, who's on the right-hand side, will be determined to salvage something from this competition. There he is. Training partner and great friend of Glenn Ross on the far side. John Kiss, the prison officer. That is Paul Banks right in the middle. We've seen some phenomenal performances in this event, in previous programs. I don't know what he's smiling about. He's enjoying himself, certainly all of these guys are. 
tremendous competitors but great friends as well. Over 20 seconds. All three competitors looking pretty steady at the moment. Tremendous support for all of these guys. Paul Banks is gone. 31.7 seconds. Now what has John Kiss got left? Martin Campbell on the other side. Shaking. But still steady. The strength in the legs and lower back so important. It looks as though these 1,200 kilogram vans, that's over a ton, is stretching their arms. Well, finally, John Kiss has really got his act together. It's still a good time. 56.8, and Campbell enjoying every second now. He has salvaged something. His best performance by far, 66.4, and that is an emphatic lead. Three very good guys to come, but at the moment, it's Campbell. Adrian Rollinson and the rest go next, and can Rollinson make it three in a row? It'd be nice to go away with one win, wouldn't it? Be brilliant. First time, like, it'd be nice if we could get one. But I'm looking forward to seeing the other boys go and watch them, see how they go. Feeling encouraged by that there? Oh, aye. I was a wee bit down there, sort of sitting down earlier on, but I feel a lot better now. Happy with that. That was a very, very good effort by Martin Campbell. But you suspect that Adrian Rollinson here Rob Dixon and, of course, Jamie Barr could produce something special. All three of them up without any problem at all. Now, at the moment, Rollinson, two victories. Rob Dixon won. He won the very first event. Jamie Barr going along steadily. Rollinson after the hat-trick of victories. Jamie Barr will use all his experience. Tremendous Highland Games competitor and strongman. Rob Dixon on the far side, just glancing down at the floor. Looks comfortable. Great support from the Rollinson family. Come on, Dad. He might eat them out of house and home on a regular basis. But they're really supporting this guy to make it through to his first ever Britain's Strongest Man final. Jamie Barr's been there before. So has Rob Dixon. Heading towards a minute. Martin Campbell's time, remember, 66.4 seconds. Rob Dixon at the moment on 11 points, in equal third place. Jamie Barr in second place on 12. Rollinson in the lead. They've gone past Martin Campbell. Martin Campbell will finish in fourth place, but who's going to win this one? One event to go after this. This is crucial. They're all watching each other. Jamie Barr heading towards 90 seconds. Unbelievable. 90 seconds. This is phenomenal. All three are heading towards two minutes now. A time even Glenn Ross couldn't complete. Rollinson, perhaps looking the best of all. Come on, come on, Rollinson. That's his wife. This is unbelievable. They're going past the time that Glenn Ross said in the first program. Who will be the first to crack? Big points are at stake here. What has Jamie Barr got left? What has Rollinson got left? They think he's got it. Oh, the atmosphere here is unbearable. This is incredible, over two minutes, I've never seen anything like it. Jamie Barr goes down, he will finish in third place, Rob Dixon finishes in second, and Rollinson gets a hat-trick of victories. Absolutely fantastic from Rollinson, fantastic from Rob Dixon, and a tremendous effort by Jamie Barr as well. Oh, I don't know about them, but I am absolutely exhausted. That is one of the greatest contests I've ever seen. He said today, he walked out the bathroom, he said, I'm going to let go, even if I faint, I'm not going to let go. That was brilliant, that was. Brilliant time as well. Excellent. They were talking to each other and shouting at each other, but you were just there in a trance almost. Just trance, so I just totally cleared my mind and went for it. Went for it. One time I thought, Around about 40 seconds, I thought I was going to drop because my hands just 
totally went numb. But to pull through, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh. You're almost in the final. Yeah. Excellent. Whew. When he started shouting me, me grip started going, and I got my composure again, I started shouting, you're dropping it, Jamie, you're dropping it. Looking at me, went, come on, Yorkshire boy. So it was, uh, we're now equal points now, are we? Oh, that's well worth It's down to the end. I had to finish. But uh, at least just one point, so we finished like going equal points to the Stones. Equal, it's good so for the TV. To the day. It's good for the TV, isn't it, Jamie? Oh, that's what it's yeah. all about. Yeah. So three wins in a row and safely through to the final is Adrian Rollinson. But the best of friends and the greatest of rivals, Barr and Dixon, with everything to play for now. Well, the Atlas Stones is one of the great events of Strongman, and here's an Anglo-Scottish battle, winner take all. Bannockburn, Murrayfield, Hampden Park, Wembley. This is Rob Dixon against Jamie Barr. Good luck, guys. 16 points each. Jamie Barr has to beat Rob Dixon to make it through to his second Britain's Strongest Man final. Rob Dixon has to beat Jamie Barr. They start back to back, but this is a true head to head contest. They're so nervous, these guys. It's unbelievable. A big moment in their strongman lives. Who's going to make it through to the final? Dixon throws that one up on his shoulders. 16 and a half stones it weighs. Jamie Barr, though, in terms of these stones, the most experienced. Oh, it's absolute neck and neck stuff at the moment. Now this one's weighing in at about 20 stones. Rob Dixon makes it look so light and he's gone ahead of Jamie Barr. Rob Dixon's got the edge. He's the shortest man between the two and that makes it more difficult but the power he's got is phenomenal. At the moment Rob Dixon's going to do it. He's done it. All five in a phenomenal time. 43.2. The time is totally irrelevant. Rollinson is already through to the final, and now Rob Dixon is. Jamie Barr, one of the favourites before this heat, is relegated to third place. He'll have to come back and do it all again next year. I had inner confidence in myself to do it, but Jamie Barr's no mug, he's a hell of an athlete, so I'm pretty pleased to go through, yeah. It was a real race, that. You were looking across the whole time, weren't you? Yeah. He beat me on the first two, and I think uh, three... Three and four, really coming to my own on that one. The last one went pretty easy, actually. I was chuffed. Didn't think I could walk it in. I thought I'd have to go on my shoulder, but I'm chuffed. Very much so. Well, deservedly chuffed as well. That was a tremendous duel between him and Jamie Barr. Dixon through to the final. Jamie Barr, a regular contestant in the world's strongest man, missing out. Did you expect to win the group? Not, not, not in the fashion I have done. Well, that's excellent. I mean, the stand I've got like Jamie Barr and Rob Dixon. Oh, I mean, it's excellent. Brilliant. Cheers. You're just pleased, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> you see, oh, I am, yeah. Whew. And so those two join Fraser Tranter, Glenn Ross, Russ Bradley, and Steve Brooks in the battle for the Citroen Band trophy. So six men through to the final now, and Adrian Rollington, a real outsider, making it through in our third heat. But I don't know about you, I think he's just too old and too fat. I, I can't understand a word he says anyway. Stupid boy. Well, with or without Mr Inverdale, the competition continues tomorrow night at the slightly later time of 7.30 here on BBC One. If you want... Alistair, I must just say, what a real treat it's been to walk around these fantastic gardens that you've got here. Yeah, they're great, but I've never been happy with this monolith here of Stonehenge. If I get half a dozen big guys to help me move it to the other side of the valley, that'd be fantastic. Alistair, no problem, mate.
So here we are with the penultimate heat of this year's Britain's Strongest Man competition for the Citroen Van Trophy. Here at Alton Towers, six men have made it through to the final already. A further two are going to join them today. Big men facing big challenges. <laughs> As usual, there are six athletes in each heat, five events, two will go through, and these are the six who've made it so far. Fraser Tranter, Glenn Ross, Russ Bradley, Steve Brooks, Adrian Rollinson, Rob Dixon. Who'll join them from this lot? I'm Bill Pussock, Northampton. Mark here from Scarborough, New Yorkshire. I'm Neil Elliott from Helensborough. Brian Thomas from Dumbarton. I'm Graham Mullins from Maltby. Dan and O'Brien from Sheffield. Now this weighs 200 kilograms and in this first event they had to carry this all the way down the course over those obstacles to get to the end, first one down there wins. Now 200 kilograms is the same as two washing machines. You imagine walking with two washing machines dangling between your legs. The man with the mic is Paul Dickinson. From Northampton, Bill Pittock. From Rotherham, Graham Mullins. From Sheffield, Dan O'Brien. From Scarborough, Mal Kay. From Helensborough in Scotland, Neil Elliott. And from Dumbarton, Brian Turner. Brian Turner, a first timer in this competition. Last minute instructions, Neil Elliott in the green, Scottish discus champion, Mal Kay, the Scarborough policeman, Darren O'Brien, 20 stones of solid muscle, Graham Mullins, who's just appeared in the film Gladiator, Bill Pitter, really pumped up for this. 25 metres in the fastest time, and away we go. Graham Mullins, and right on the far side, oh, Brian Turner was leading, but he dropped it. Bill Pitter, the closest to Graham Mullins, but Mullins running away from the rest. That is incredible. Oh, he's gone. He's just got one more step to make. 200 kilos on top of the platform. Mullins wins it. Piddock in second place. Who's going to take third? Neil Elliott on the far side. The Scott going well. Very, very close between Neil Elliott and Mal Kay. Well, Neil Elliott just got it by the skin of his teeth. Third place, Mal Kay in fourth. But what a performance by Graham Mullins. Six very, very big points for the biggest man in this competition. Was that as easy as it looked? Um, I see. I want to say, yes, it, it was. It felt good. Really felt good this time. Is it easier being in films or doing this? Um, it's the same amount of time waiting around to get on and get it done. But I think the film's a little bit easier. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Let's tell Tom Cruise that. Um, I knew I had a bit of a race on with... Brian Mullins being a taller man, it does suit a taller man. And the discus thrower, Neil, I thought he'd be good as well, but I thought I should have won it. I dropped it a few times, huh? but um, I'm pleased with that. That's not a bad second, I suppose. So was that a, an event you were hoping to do better in, or weren't you sure? No, I've, I've never done this before, and um, I'm better at um, heavier events. Uh, the deadlift hold, I think, will be my little joker I'm going to play, but not to anybody that. <laughs> Sorry, nobody's watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that was a step into the unknown for some of them, but Graham Mullins was the biggest and the best. Bill Pittock in second, and in third, Neil Elliott. Very hard heat. What a quick guys, what experienced guys, what a tall guys, which is suited to this event. And uh, it was all just about what's done on the day. And uh, made a few mistakes, but I'm quite happy, came third. So next event should be good. So what's this going to be like then? Uh, very tough on the hands. A lot of pain in the hands. Um, it's good heavy weight, I think it's 168 kilos, which is heavier than the last event. So it's normally a good event for me, but um, we'll have to see. So how do you train for an event like this? Uh, basically we just um, hang from a bar from the ceiling. We just hang weights around our waist, 120 pounds, and just hang there as long as we can, which is very similar. It certainly is similar. It might explain why some of these guys have got very long arms. That doesn't apply though to Darren O'Brien. Only five foot eight inches tall, but 20 stones. He's built more like a bodybuilder. A protege of Look Jamie out, Reeves from Sheffield. Hold on, two. Jamie Reeves, one of the referees here, standing right behind Darren. Now, as we've come to expect in previous programmes, any time over 30 seconds here is very, very good indeed. He looks a bit like Desperate Dan, doesn't he? Squared off jaw, massive muscles. Powerlifter, strongman, bodybuilder, he's got it all. But what sort of time can he produce here? He was last in the first event, so needs excellent points. Heading towards a pretty good time. 35.4 seconds, and that is the target for all the other competitors. Much, much better by Darren O'Brien. Well, that'll make him think, wouldn't it? <laughs> you made me think that's uh, enjoyed it. It's great. It's just uh, your grip, that's all. But I needed a good time because I didn't do quite well yesterday through uh, my knee injury, but I needed a good time with that one. Please at that. Touch wood. <laughs> anyway, isn't it? it was good fun, that. Yeah. Were you actually enjoying it when you were out there? Once you get your send right, you're all right, and then you're just going to take pain, that's all. But I enjoy a lot of that, anyway. A bit of weight, more pain on my body. Good day, enjoying it. <laughs> well, making funny faces too, but of pain. Brian Turner, just 28.7 for him, and also Neil Elliott, 33.1 seconds for him. Rock and roll. This is Mal Kay. Still Darren O'Brien in the lead. And like Darren, the first time that Mal Kay has appeared in Rock Britain's ball. Strongest Man competition. Are you ready? Hold on, no! Very deceptive is Mal Kay. He's about six foot five inches tall. The big policeman. But he is over 20 stones. He's a well conditioned athlete. Ten seconds. Those handles tearing into the flesh on the hands. It's just as much about controlling the pain as anything else. 35.4 seconds, the target for Mal Kay. Still some good competitors to come. Mal Kay, remember, fourth in event one. He's gone over the time. He's in the lead. 37 seconds exactly. He said he liked heavy events, and they don't come much heavier than this one. The bars are very good, but they're just, you must have heard this before, they just make your hands feel as if someone's got a lighted match underneath on your, um, on your, on your palms. It's so hot. But you just keep going, and if you get to 20, um, it's like Darren said before, if you get to 20 mile, you get to 30, and you do. And you want to keep on, but you're thinking, how much skin's going to come off if I keep holding on to this thing? But I'm, uh, I'm chuffed with that, because I, I wasn't looking forward to that. Graham Mullins next. Big man. Six foot five. 27 stones in body weight. Are you ready? Hold on. No! Well, the latest blockbuster from Hollywood, the film Gladiator. And this fellow played quite a prominent role in that. I think he eventually got killed, but uh, he's with us now. And Wait hopefully second. heading towards a time of 37 seconds plus. Quiet. <laughs> he wants support from the crowd. Well, he obviously feels confident. He wants maximum points for this one six points in the first event and two victories in a row 
would really put him on course for a place in the final. He's going well. Oh, he's finished. Malke is still in the lead, but Graham Mullins into second place. 35.8 seconds. Bill Pittock from Northampton. Fourth in last year's final. He's feeling all right, yeah, he's done all the training. Yeah, he's a bit nervous, he said, this year, but that's a good thing, because I think he lost that before. But yeah, he's been all right, he's enjoying it, so he'll do his best, he always does. <laughs> and I should give him a good idea when he gets home. <laughs> well, rather you than me, Debbie. His family, constant support to Bill, in his quest to become Britain's strongest man for the first time. We've got a long way to go before the strongest man is crowned, though, for the Citroen Vans Trophy. Will Bill Pittock be there? Second in event one to Graham Mullins. And he's got half an eye on the clock, that's for sure. 20 seconds, negotiated safely. Beginning to shake just a little bit. Oh, his left hand gave way. 28.6 seconds. He won't be happy with that. Broken nail. <laughs> I told him not to have them false ones. <laughs> Mal Kay, the surprise winner, but even more of a turn up, that seasoned campaigner Bill Pittock holding up the rest. How much has that set you back? Uh, there's still three events to go, but that was appalling, really. I think I was sixth place, from second to sixth. Um, I don't know, it's a good event for me. When you do bad at your good events, that's, that's not good, but just didn't feel comfortable in my hands. Didn't feel that heavy. I don't know, just three more events to go. Still plenty of time. But already Graham Mullins is the man to beat, but will Mal Kay cop a place in the final? policeman I work on the task force in, uh, in North Yorkshire Police with the guys who come through people's doors at six o'clock in the morning early morning with the big red key we call it and it, 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 um, it fits every door I'm normally the first one in for some reason and I don't know why uh, unless we know there's a dog in there then I'll, uh, I'll throw one of the little guys in there first I like the job I've got I joined it because I like to help people and I like the, I like the job I've just got to um, I've just got to keep myself motivated uh, and when I can train train and when I can't train I'll eat no, 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 no. what we have here are two railway sleepers battened together that weigh 500 pounds or a quarter of a ton now there's two ways of looking at this if you're Alan Titchmarsh what you see is a nice piece of decking but if you're a contender for Britain's strongest man, what you see is a massive piece of wood that somehow you've got to get from this end of the course to that. Bill Piddock in the red, Brian Turner the Scot in the white, and Bill Piddock has got an enormous amount of work to do. Conditions are not good for this event. It's Take very, it very wet underfoot. Take your grip. 230 kilograms, Brian Turner lifted that up like a feather. That was phenomenal, and again, the second flip coming in double quick time. Bill Piddock just a shade behind at the moment. Jamie Reeve just standing behind Bill Piddock. Gregor Edmonds behind Brian Turner, two Scots together. And that is for safety. And Brian Turner is going so, so well. That slip there for Bill Piddock. 500 pounds, made all the more difficult by the conditions. But the Scot, the man from Dumbarton, is going well. One more flip might do it. This is a new event to Britain's strongest man. It's proving difficult. He's got to go again. But I think Brian Turner can do it. Bill Piddock, oh, he's bleeding from the nose as well. Bill Piddock is in all sorts of trouble here. And Brian Turner will finish it. 15 seconds left. That is tremendous. Well done to Brian Turner. You made that look alarmingly easy. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> uh, oh, come on.
Mal K on this side. This was one event he said he was looking forward to. Likes the heavy events. And Graham Mullins right next to him. Thank the you, overall Lord. leader by two points. Take your grip. That time that Brian Turner set 61.2 seconds. Absolutely incredible. Graham Mullins slightly ahead of the man in yellow. He's got to watch his grip. Douglas Edmonds, the referee in the background, and all the timekeepers as well. Tremendous organisation here at Alton Towers. And tremendous efforts now by Graham Mullins. Putting on a bit of a spurt. Oh, flips it over so easily. 225 kilos, that's over 500 pounds. And Graham Mullins heading for another victory perhaps. Mal Kay's got some work to do now. Graham Mullins needs to do it one more time and he's going to walk it. It's well under a minute. Absolutely unbelievable. Confirms his status as perhaps the favourite to win this heat. Still two events to go. Mal Kay still going along quite nicely. I'm not sure he's going to finish it this time. Only 12 seconds left now. So Brian Turner, the Scot, will take a well-earned second place. Mal Kay, I think, is going to finish around about third. Yes, he is. Another good effort from the policeman from Scarborough. And he can afford to smile. Goodness knows how. The first couple of turns was a shock. And as you go on, it seems to get easier and easier and easier. I was getting closer and closer and closer. I wasn't, I wasn't counting the flips. But as soon as you get in the groove, you get the technique, bump. It was going. It felt good. How difficult was it for you with him rocking ahead? Yeah, I'm conscious of it. I saw the earlier on shave a bit off Graham's log and put it on mine. <laughs> so, no, no, it's hard. My hands were slipping. The guys have used the same gloves. No excuses. Uh, but it was just... Well, I'll cut it to Graham. It's very heavy. I don't know about what Graham says it was heavy. Graham Mullins untouchable, but Brian Turner giving himself a chance of progressing to the final. And while Mullins marches on, concern mounts for Bill Pittock. Is he out of it already? So the van lift could ultimately decide this group, and as far as Bill's concerned, it hasn't gone as well as you might have hoped, has it? No, I've kind of underestimated the opposition. Uh, a lot of the lads are new to the competition, and I think that's where I've gone wrong, I've underestimated them. Well, Bill is far too experienced to make those sort of mistakes. He's going to find it very difficult to qualify for the final now. Sandwiched in between Darren O'Brien from Yorkshire and Neil Elliott, Ready. our Scottish discus champion. Left. Up safe and sound, although Neil Elliott struggled a little bit there to get it to arm's length. That is the first, but look at the muscle definition Ten around seconds. Darren O'Brien's neck. Oh. Well, some of these guys have got necks anything up to about 23 inches. Goodness knows where they find shirts to fit them. Neil Elliott looks a little slimmer, although he does weigh about 19 stones. 125 kilos or thereabouts. And Darren certainly looking very comfortable. I think Bill has got one eye on his wife in the audience who'll be shouting out the time to him. Oh, and Neil Elliott's gone. The first to go at 40.8 seconds. That is Bill Piddock's support, his mentor, and his sometimes coach as well, Darren O'Brien, relishing this head-to-head -head contest between himself and a man who finished fourth in last year's final, and that is Bill Piddock. What a phenomenal competition. Who's going to be the first to go? Oh, Bill Pinnock just 67.3. O'Brien a tenth of a second more. But what has gone wrong with Bill Pinnock? I think he needed to, you know, push it a bit further, that one, actually. He'll be pleased with that, though. You know. I don't know, he's just lost it in his head, I think. He'll do his best. And well, that was we'll very tight, year. obviously. <laughs> or he'll retire and do knitting. Bill and Darren. <laughs> I can't imagine Bill Piddock doing any sort of knitting, Ray! but I'm sure he'll be back bigger and stronger next year. Meanwhile, the challenge for a place in the final goes on. Brian Turner on this side, there's Mal Kay, just trying to get his balance. Graham Mullins, solid as a rock, looking composed. Turner, in his first ever Britain's Strongest Man, he's gone pretty well, lying in third place overall. 20 seconds. 
Now then, the lead at the moment. Darren O'Brien, 67.4. Brian Turner, if possible, has to beat both Graham Mullins and Mal Kay. Mal Kay on the far side. I think this event is not designed for tall men. Brian Turner, he's around about six feet tall. It would suit him a little better. But he's the one that's looking a bit unsure. Mal Kay grimacing. 50 seconds. Over 50 seconds. All looking pretty steady. There's Graham Mullins, mother and father, watching their little lad. Brian Turner hoping to stay with it for as long as possible. They've gone past the time set by Darren O'Brien and Bill Piddock. So more problems for Piddock, but Turner is finished. 70.6 and Mal Kay a little bit longer, 72.5. And can you believe it? Mullins just lowers it to the floor, makes it look so easy. His third victory, he must be on the way to the final. What did he do about 120? And he was still in control, he put it down, he didn't drop it. You know, he just made his, made his statement and away he went. Yeah, it's great, that he'll if he's not been doing anything at all. Graham Mullins waltzing into the final, and that good performance by Mal Kay means this heat is virtually done and dusted. Brian Turner will need a miracle to overhaul Mal Kay. I've done the Stones once before in Scotland, and I beat, and I beat Brian there, so we'll wait and see. Um, I have to come last, he has to come first. And my mate Graham won't let him come first, so because it's Yorkshire. Yorkshire together. I see it, mate. So it's the Yorkshire Mafia working against them. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> And so we come to the final event. Five massive stones ranging between 95 kilograms and 135 kilograms. That's the combined weight of Alan Shearer and Michael Owen. And they have to be picked up and put on that wall there. You might know this event as the Atlas Stones. We call it the Balder Dash. Well, I'm not sure about a dash for it, but there's no doubt about something. Bill Pittock has got to salvage some pride from this competition. Brian Turner has acquitted himself well in his first ever Britain's Strongest Man. So here we go. The last event of Heat 4, Piddock is away. That's the most difficult in some... Oh, nearly, oh, it has come off. My goodness, Brian Turner. Oh, I was about to say Turner was away and running ahead of Bill Piddock, but he's composed himself now, but still only on the first stone. Neither of these guys have got a chance of going through to the final. It is about pride. It's about salvaging some points and nothing would give Bill Piddock greater pleasure than to win this event. Still two great competitors to come, Mal Kay and Graham Mullins, on their way to the final. So these two guys putting on a bit of a show. Piddock on number four, 125 kilos, nearly 20 stones. It weighs just a shade more than he does. Well done to Bill Piddock. Brian Turner struggling a wee bit. Uh, Brian Turner, a comparative novice at this sort of event, unlike Bill Pinnock, who gets all five, with four seconds remaining. Brian Turner's going to finish well down the field on this one. But Bill Pinnock has set a very high standard and salvaged some pride. Too for that. A bit too light, that. Never mind. Have you ever got five up before? Uh, no, I'm pleased with that. And how do you view the whole week? Just disappointing? Uh, yeah, I think I'm at it now. I'm getting too old. Is, is this the official retirement speech? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I went out on that though. Yeah, I'll see you next year, but I'll be the coach. <laughs> yeah, you're hanging up your barbells. Yeah, good say that, yeah. Got to get back some DIY, I think. <laughs> Well, Mal Kay facing us and Graham Mullins. Confident in the knowledge, they're at the start line, therefore, they're in the final. <laughs> Mullins, his points difference between him and the rest, absolutely incredible. 23 points, Mal Kay 18, nobody can catch them. And so now it's all about winning this final event ahead of Bill Piddock and producing a little bit of a psychological edge on all the rest of the competitors going into the final. 
Malkay, six foot four, 20 stones. This guy, six foot five, weighs somewhere between 25 and 27 stones. So he lost a bit of weight on the set of the film Gladiator in torrid conditions. But back to training hard for strongest man competition now. On his fourth stone. Little shove up, nice and easy. Marquet wanting support from the crowd, but Graham Mullins is going to win this one. I think he might win the overall event ahead of Bill Pittock. 70 seconds. Bill Pittock's time was, and Graham Mullins has done it again. I think Mullins now established as one of the favourites to take the overall title when we come to the final, and Mal Kay will join him in that final. Come on, let's get the last turn. He won't have time. Graham Mullins wins this event. He wins the heat, and Mal Kay is through to the final with him. A Yorkshire duo have done us proud. Graham, you're like a football team that can't stop winning. Yeah, well, it's really good. Really, it's really good. Well, I've played since now, two Yorkshire boys in the final at the heat, so we're not going to let the county down and we're going to go for it. Do you think he's a potential winner of the whole he's thing? It, the Yorkshire's going to win it this year. That's all I'll say. That's fine. And if it's not going to be you? Well, it'll be the biggest man in the competition then. So, four wins in five events, Mullins unstoppable, and he and Mal Kay well clear of the rest. Pittock retires honourably, Darren O'Brien vows to be back. Power-wise, I'm OK for power, but just technique. Getting used to, to awkwardness at shapes and everything like that. Completely different than bodybuilding this. But we can only try, can't we? Good fun. Brilliant. Yes! And so to those other six names can be added Mullins and Kay for the final of the Citroen Van Trophy. So Graham Mullins, today's winner, a big guy I know, but I just can't see him winning, you know, because he's such a poser these days. He's far more concerned about being a film star than a strong man. The final heats on Saturday at five past seven. Next tonight on BBC One, the East Enders on holiday. For long years of So you're one of the key figures in the Grand Force here. You must be so proud of the way the guards are looking at the moment. Indeed I am, the time of year. But there's just one problem. That big house over there, if I could have my way, I'd get a bunch of big blokes just to move it maybe 25 yards to the right. Well... Welcome back to Alton Towers and the final heat in the Battle of the Big Men. Eight guys are through already to the final, but there are still two places up for grabs today. And one man in the end will walk away with the Citroen Van Trophy and be crowned Britain's strongest man. In this final heat, six athletes, five disciplines, the top two will go through to the final. These are the eight who've made it already, and which of these six will complete the lineup? I'm Lee Bowers from Airbay in Lancashire. I'm Brian Bell from Dundee in Scotland. I'm Andy Maven from Loughton in Essex. Rob Alf from Hull. I'm Joe Ray from Barnsley. I'm Christian Clay from Lantford Vardar in pont de Prix, just outside Cardiff. If you take the M4 and come off at Junction 34... Go...
and in this final heat, these are the disciplines that await our six strongmen. Ever been for a walk with an eight-year-old on your shoulders because they were tired? Well, you know what it feels like. Well, in this first event, they've got to carry this 200 kilogram weight all the way down the course and over those obstacles. And if you want to know what 200 kilograms is like, it's not one eight-year-old, it's eight of them. Commentary comes from Paul Dickinson. From Lancashire, Lee Bowers. From Dundee, Brian Bell. From Barnsley, Andrew Rains. From Pontypridd, Christian Clay. From Hull, Robert Howe. And from Loughton, Andrew Mavin. Andrew Mavin, former professional footballer with Millwall. Next to him, Robert Howe, a real showman. Christian Clay from Wales, the powerlifter. Andrew Rains, the ex-bodybuilder. Brian Bell, former world champion in powerlifting. And Lee Bowers, a former athlete. Some real experience in this first event of the final heat. Take a grip. 25 metres in the fastest possible time. Oh, Robert Howe going well. So is the smallest man here, Andrew Rains. Look at him. He's certainly one of the most powerful individuals I've ever seen. Christian Clay's going well. Andrew Rains coming away in the last five metres. Andrew Rains just in first place. Yes, he finishes now. Robert Howe in second place. Andrew Mavin may have just finished in third. What a finish by Andrew Rains. And that is Robert Howe. A good result for him as well. Did you think you got yours down first? I thought I got mine down first, but... Had not looked at anybody else's lane, so who knows? Andrew won by two tenths of a second. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Nice one. Well done, mate. Thanks a lot. But was that a good start for you? Yeah, very pleased. Yeah, I mean, a thing like that. You mean you could come last easily, triple, four, whatever. So yeah, no complaints. Yeah, it was good for the crowd. Fit and fast, furious. Give the kiss. Oh, <laughs> they made my day already. Good start for you. I mean, you're obviously stockier than most of the guys. Is that a good? Is that a plus or a minus for a lot of the events you've got to uh, Well, when I turned up for this, I, I, I seem to have made a big mistake. I thought this was the shortest man in Britain. But, you know what I'm saying? That's that. Short and sweet, Andrew Raines six points, Rob Howe in second place, but Lee Bowers right at the bottom. It's the first event, a um, few days competition. Uh, there's lots of points to be had, so don't write me off. Not yet, anyway. Wait till the end. So, so what's this going to be like then? It's going to be difficult. It's going to be very difficult. Just got to keep tight all the way through it. Pain? Oh, lots of pain. Lots of pain in the arms and then in the shoulders. Christian Clay. Christian Clay from Pontypridd. He loves powerlifting. He loves all these heavy events, and they don't come a lot heavier than this. 160 kilograms in both hands. There's his grandfather, ever present at all of his grandson's strength competitions. Christian, 21 stones, over six feet tall. Not particularly big as far as strong men is concerned, but so, so strong, especially in his lower back. I'm not sure about the arms. Maybe we've seen this young man in competitions before when it's come to arm strength. He hasn't been great, but he needs big points here. Second to last to Lee Bowers in the last event. 20 seconds. Keep holding, Christian. Anything over 30 seconds is certainly a very good time here. So Christian Clay, come on. Over 30 seconds, gritting his teeth. A couple of seconds more, no. He finishes on 35.6, and that is a pretty tough target for the rest. Well, you thought it might be like, how was it? Horrible. Uh, it, it started, after, after about 15 seconds, it really started to hurt. But it got to about 25 seconds. It really hurt them. You certainly shouldn't underestimate 35 seconds. It's a very good time, and what have we got now from Brian Bell? Former world record holder for the bench press. 
And that's an exercise that everybody, I think, does when they go into a gymnasium, whether it's on a machine or loose weights. This guy has bench-pressed almost 600 pounds, nearly 280 kilos. Now then, getting towards 20 seconds. So far, so good. Oh. Unbelievable effort from Brian Bell. He's hanging on by his fingertips. 30.6 seconds. I'm not sure the Scot is going to be very happy with that. You, you were letting it rip there vocally at the end, weren't you? I had nothing left, so I was just hoping the voice would hold on in front of me. <laughs> but your voice can't hold him up. Ah, I would be good at that. <laughs> it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. I don't think I breathed the whole time when I was shouting. <laughs> and I was leaning on this, so that didn't help either. <laughs> That's one of his worst events, so at least he's got some points out of that one. He's just got to stand there and do that. <laughs> You've got to stand here worrying about it. Well, plenty of cause for concern for Lee Bowers. Just 24.4 seconds for him. Andrew Mavin faring little better. 30.8. Yes. Robert Howe, last year, in the heat of World's Strongest Man, we saw a tremendous show by this guy in a deadlift competition where he seemed to just hang on forever. Now, what has he got here? 35... Oh, my goodness, 35.6. Well, I'm not sure that's within the rules, but I don't think the rule makers would have taken account of this guy. I think he fancies his chances here. Second in the first event. And this looks so, so easy. The Tiller girls eat your heart out. He's heading towards the lead. 35.6 by Christian Clay. Yes, he says. Now it begins to dig in and it's gone. Well, it was still a great performance. A bit of overacting, perhaps, by Robert Howe, but 40 seconds plus. What a show. It's fun, and you've got to take it as fun. Obviously, our trainer's out as the next man, but at the end of the day, there's more things like in life important, so that's it. Few competitions he's been in, he's just been in it for the experience, but it's determined to win this year, so let's say I have to watch out. <laughs> well, I should have concentrated more. I was aiming for a minute, and I knew... If I could go back on there in a minute, Sam, I'd do a, I know I could do a minute, but I just was just having so much fun there, like, I just thought I'd carry on with a laugh, so... Final competitor, Andrew Rains. The man from Essex. So here we go, 40.4 seconds by Robert Howe, the winner of the first event, Andrew Rains here. And when John Inverdale said that this guy was stocky, what I think he meant was that he's about as wide as he is tall. How on earth he manages to pack in about a 20 stone body weight into that frame, I don't know. Easily past 20 seconds, a former bodybuilder, a champion, a former powerlifter and a champion as well. His first Britain's Strongest Man competition. Now he's heading towards Christian Clay and he's gone past. The next target is Robert Howe. He couldn't quite manage it, but that is still a very, very good second place for Andrew Raines. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased about, about the progress, but I'm not gonna I'm not writing anybody off yet. How much stick do you get from all the other guys taking part about your build? Uh well I, I mean everybody calls I'm caught stumpy. Uh, I've been caught stumpy since I was what, about 16 years of age, so I mean, I don't even, I don't take a great deal of stick because I'm just used to it now. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't matter, does it? It's, it's what you do on the day, so touch wood, we'll see what happens, you know. Stumpy in second place behind the all singing, all dancing Rob Howe. And that means the two of them are jointly top of the leaderboard after two events. So was a sportsman in everything really. Uh, my dad was a wrestler. And we always say that he takes after him like. Oh, he's it it always been a joker to everybody. 
I get real excited. <laughs> He's got a great personality, even though it's my son, but he has, and I'm very proud of him. Well, this is a brand new event, Fingal's Fingers, based on the legend of the giant who built that causeway from Northern Ireland to Scotland. And the lightest of these is more than 200 kilograms. And the thing about the giant's causeway was, Ben Johnson, that's not the athlete, said it was worth seeing but not worth going to see. Well, I'll tell you something, this is definitely worth watching. Lee Bowers. And Brian Bell. Andrew Mavin and Christian Clay have finished and these guys have got to try and beat two fingers. 200 kilograms increasing to 300. Absolutely incredible. Lee Bowers, he used to be a sprinter in athletics. And that was a few kilograms ago. He weighs about 21 stones now, about the same sort of weight as Brian Bell. The fastest possible time for each object flipped over will win this competition. We've yet to see anybody do all five. Brian Bell going well with two. Now Lee Bowers the same, but Brian Bell is ahead by virtue of the faster time. Bell from Dundee likes a bit of karaoke in his spare time. Not too many people would shout for him to get off the stage, I'm sure. Lee Bowers from Lancashire, a former competitor in World's Strongest Man, but he is struggling here in these competitions. He's not on good form. Brian Bell is finished. Brian Bell has managed to flip three of those Fingal's fingers. Lee Bowers, is he going to get free? It's obviously a slower time. Great support from his wife and daughter. He's running out of time, just about eight seconds to go. Oh, I don't think he's going to do it. Well, maybe he is. Total exhaustion from Lee Bowers, that is it. Still in need of big points. Brian Bell in the lead. So you're back in contention now, aren't you, really? I had no choice with that event. I had to go full out, try and get the quickest time. A lot of the boys from the final last year are having a bit of bad luck. So that's got me back in the points again, so two events to fight for, and hopefully <laughs> I might make it now. How do you think the next two might do? Well, Andy Lane is a big surprise. He's very short, but he's the most powerful boy I've seen, so I'll just sit with my fingers crossed and hope for the best. Robert Howe may find this event difficult. Very, very bad conditions. It's slippery underfoot. It's drizzling as well, so the slippery pole may be a big problem. Andrew Rains, a real surprise package in this final heat. Winning the first event, of course. There's about six inches difference in their height here. Look at that, 200 kilograms flipped up so easily by Andrew Rains. Over goes number one. Well, he's not bothering to run. Endurance is every bit as important in this event as strength. Robert Howe just struggling a little bit. He's actually catching Andrew Reigns up. Over goes number two for both men. The lead at the moment is held by Brian Bell. Three of Fingal's fingers flipped over in 34.8. Robert Howe just lacking a bit of endurance. Andrew Ray, oh my goodness, that is it. Andrew Rains is finished. He's only managed to do two. There's Robert's mum. Rob's girlfriend as well. Not so much of a showman this time. This is very, very hard indeed. And Rob Howe is finished. Brian Bell wins it. Three of Fingal's fingers in the fastest time. No excuses. I mean, I, I would have probably fared better if I'd have been taller, but I can't, you know, I mean, that's no excuse. Uh, it was very, very heavy. Simple as that. Uh, Brian and Lee beat me. I said, well, better at this event. Simple as that. Raining on Stumpy's parade at the moment, but the Scotsman Brian Bell feeling much happier, and he's in real contention after three events. Andrew Raines, though, is still the man in pole position. If I can get to the final, I'll be really, really pleased. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow's events bring.
Right, no car lift in this year's competition. It's a van lift instead. This thing weighs 1,200 kilograms, three of them going head to head. You've got to keep it up for as long as you possibly can. Now, when you're confronted with an event like this, some guys do a lot of sit-ups, press-ups, a lot of cardiovascular work. Other guys, though, they just sort of chill. Oh, I've got one of them. Oh, I've got one of them. Our first group of three to try and lift this enormous weight. Christian Clay right in the middle, Ready. Andrew Mavin on the left-hand side, and Lee Bowers. That's the difficult bit. Well, it's one of the most difficult bits, just getting it off the ground. We've seen some phenomenal times during Britain's Strongest Man Heats, and approaching two minutes is a target these guys can look to. Lee Bowers. I don't think he's got any chance of making the final now. On the far side, Andrew Mavin. Well, he's been a revelation. What a conversion from a professional footballer to a strong man in only a few years. That's the man I'm talking about. Over 30 seconds, Christian Clay. Oh, he's gone. I'm surprised. Andrew Mavin continues. Christian Clay is finished. A background as a power lifter, he should have done better. Andrew Mavin, his playing weight was about 12 and a half stones when he played for Millwall. Now he weighs about 20. Opposite him in the powerlifting suit. There he is, Lee Bowers. Another 20 stoner. And Lee Bowers is finished. Down and out for Lee Bowers. Andrew Mavin is the only man left. And over a minute. Now this is a very good target for the rest to follow in the next group. Yeah. trying to compose himself trying to block out the pain over 80 seconds and the rest can only stand and stare Jamie Reeve standing behind one of the marshals one of the inventors of some of these tests of strength what has Andrew Mavin got left coming up to 100 seconds every second counts now this is tremendous by Andrew Mavin. Andrew Mavin from Loughton in Essex. He's not particularly heavy. He weighs about 19 stones. And that is a comparative lightweight for Britain's strongest man. Could he be the first man to go over two minutes this year? Yes, he can. And he's still got something left. Absolutely incredible. Andrew Mavin, 124.6 seconds. I was lying in bed last night thinking about this one, but it wasn't quite as bad as I thought. So how do you assess uh, the time? It's not too bad. I'm, I'm sticking in there, aren't I? He certainly is sticking in. Now, what can Andrew Rains, Brian Bell or Robert Howe do about this one? That's Brian Bell. Good power lifter. Robert Howe on the first. Oh, Robert Howe has not got it off the ground. I don't believe it. Robert Howe put on a tremendous display in the deadlift last year, and he's finished. He can't believe it. So very bad points indeed for Robert Howe. Andrew Rains right in the middle, steady as a rock. Brian Bell in the blue. Andrew Rains looks pretty steady. Brian Bell trying to stay composed. But what a target has been set by Andrew Mavin. Over two minutes. But Brian Bell is a veteran of many, many Highland Games and World's Strongest Man programs in the past. This guy is the newcomer. 50 seconds. Brian Bell trying to put pressure on himself to keep hanging on. Tremendous support for all these competitors. Again, we've got a fantastic atmosphere. And look at the composure of Andrew Rains. Brian Bell just beginning to struggle a bit. Rains steady as a rock. Bell has finished. 78 seconds. It's still a pretty good time. But I think he's going to find himself in third place. Only one event to go after this one. Oh, this is unbelievable once again. Andrew Mavin, when he approached 100 seconds, was looking very unsure. But this guy, well, he's talking to the judges saying, what's happening? What time have I done? What have I got to beat? I'll tell you what, we could be here this time tomorrow if this carries on. Andrew Rains, 
producing one of the best performances we've seen so far. He's just got five seconds to go to win. Oh, he's hanging on by the straps. The grip is irrelevant. He's passed the time. He's in first place. A tremendous victory. He doesn't need to do any more. Down it goes, under control. And that is just a simply phenomenal performance by the smallest man in this competition. When I got to about 50 seconds, the grip just went completely. And it was just the straps that were holding me. And at that point, I got a lot of confidence because I could feel in my body that I've got the strength to carry on. It's just like I say, if the straps go, as you saw with Lee, the straps go, that's it, you've gone. Uh, yeah, really pleased with that. How long could you have kept going, do you think? <sighs> Depending on how long I needed to keep going. Once I saw Rob struggling, it was just a matter of holding on for as long as I can. But now I think I'm a point ahead, so... If I don't need a silly in the stones, I should be OK. So you're much happier now than you were this time yesterday? Yeah, I've got a wee smile on my face anyway. Eh? <laughs> Andrew Raines, that victory is good enough for him to guarantee himself a place in the final. But the way things have panned out there, it's now a three-horse race to join him in the last ten. It was, it was my first year in Britain's Strongest Man I came, and all I wanted to do was get to the final. Well, I've achieved that now, so anything else is a bonus. Andrew Mavin was one of those three who could join Andrew Raines in the final, but he struggled in the stones, putting just two in place in over 30 seconds. And so to the last event, the Atlas Stones, and a place in the final at stake. Five huge balls, two big men. Scotland against England, it's Howe against Bell. Robert Howe on this side. What a showman he's been for us over these last four events. Brian Bell, one point advantage coming into this event. So Robert Howe must beat the Scotsman to make it through to the final. Ready. Andrew Raines is already there. No problem for the small man. But who will join him? Now, Brian Bell has done this event many, many times, unlike Robert Howe. Howe struggling just a little bit. Look at the way that Brian Bell flipped that ball up there. It weighs nearly 17 stones in weight, and he's made it look very simple. And that means that Andrew Mavin has got no chance of the final now. Brian Bell, two stones, much quicker than Mavin. And the third goes up quickly, too. Good news for the Scotsman. And you just feel that Robert Howe's chances of going through to the final now are ebbing away with every second. Number four, nearly 20 stones in weight. Robert Howe's girlfriend shouting encouragement. He might not make it through to the final this year, but I'm sure he'll keep training hard and try and do it in future events. Brian Bell has done it. And not only that, he's won this last event. One of his favourite events too. He joins Andrew Raines in the final. And all that's left in this final heat of Britain's Strongest Man is for Robert Howe to try and put on a bit of a show. That is it. He's run out of time. A great effort. But in the end, it wasn't good enough. Brian Bell is through to the final. Andrew Raines has won this heat. That was a big effort by Robert Howe. Better luck next time. Got it. <laughs> feel like crying. <laughs> no, he's done really well. I think I'll be pleased with what he's done up to now with Owen next year. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, this has been a very hard couple of days. It's been a lot of pressure and pain. So I think I've lost a bit of stone and worry. <laughs> so how do you view your prospects for the final? Well, I'm just going to dig in there and hopefully someone will come out of it. You feel you're getting better as it goes on? Oh, I feel in better condition and stronger than last year. So hopefully I can do better this year. And victory in that last event, enough to guarantee Brian Bell a place in the final. Too little too late for Lee Bowers. He finishes in fourth place, and it's Bell and Andrew Raines who go through to the next stage. I've got some good, I've got some good events to come in the final. I've also got some bad ones, so we'll just have to wait and see. I'm not making no predictions, you know. I'm just glad to get to the final and, and that's it, you know. That's the completed lineup. 
Which of these men will lift the Citroen Van Trophy? So we know the lineup for the final now, and even though Stumpy may have won that last tee, I mean, he's not going to win the whole thing, is he? I mean, Stumpy, he can barely see over the finger. Never mind lift it up and push it over. And the final is on Wednesday at 5 to 8 on BBC One. Up next tonight, the National Lottery on the spot in Belfast with Des O'Connor. Well, the Olympic Games begin in a couple of weeks' time. Citius, Altius, Fortius, fastest, highest, but it's the strongest that concern us here at Alton Towers because today we're going to find out who is the strongest man in Britain. So battle about to be joined to be Britain's strongest man for this, the Citroen Van Trophy. And here at Alton Towers, amid the rhododendrons and the roller coasters, the big question is, can Glenn Ross retain the crown that he won last year, or can one of these nine take the title from him? After five weeks of heats, these ten men now face a series of Herculean tasks, including pulling buses, lifting cars, hauling chains and flipping tyres. This will be no place for the feeble or faint-hearted. Only the very strong need a fly. Well, the rules of our competition are very straightforward. There are ten competitors. They each take part in all of seven disciplines, at the end of which there will be just one winner. So let's now meet our ten men who all harbour ambitions of being crowned Britain's strongest man. Everybody's looking in good form at the moment. Graham Mullins is looking very good, but you can never tell just one slip up and somebody else can go into the lead. Are you eyeing victory here? Um, if I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, you've got to think that way. The new man, Adrian, uh, is looking very strong. Have you dreamed about winning? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, good to South Africa, it'd be brilliant. Can you win it? It'd be nice. I'm going to go for it, like everybody else. I mean, you see what we've done in the heats. I'm up for it. I don't want to come tenth out of ten. No, I don't do. I don't. I don't do coming last. Who do you most fear? Steve Brooks. Yeah. Steve Brooks. Yeah. Steve will be the man to watch here. I'm not very excited at all. I'm more nervous than anything else. <laughs> and 
how do you assess the rest of the field? I don't think they've got a chance. So the moment of truth is just about upon us. This is the first of our seven events, and it really will sort the men from the boys. Each of these giant cylinders weighs 150 kilograms. In old money, that's a combined weight of getting on for 50 stone. It's called the super yoke, and at the end of this, nobody wants to have egg on their face. Our commentator is Paul Dickinson. Well, the shortest man in the competition, just going out of shot, Andrew Rains, Brian Bell from Scotland, big policeman there, Mal Kay from Scarborough, Graham Mullins, our film star, he's just appeared in Gladiators, and the defending champion, Glenn Ross from County Down. Take your position. Two heats of five strong men. 25 metres the course, 300 kilograms the total. In the fastest possible time, they're away together. Mal Kay struggling a bit and he's gone down. And Glenn Ross is struggling too. Graham Mullins it is, who's setting the pace at the moment. This is very, very fast. On the far side, Andrew Rain's going quite well. Brian Bell gritting his teeth, but Graham Mullins is going to win it by a streak. 18.7 seconds. Glenn Ross coming through into second place after a very slow start. Brian Bell in third. What a start by the gladiator Graham Mullins. Glenn Ross looking a bit perplexed. In defence of his title, he's come second in his first event, and Mal Kay will not finish the course. I knew it was going to be hard, but I thought I would have got more than four foot. Uh, just felt like I had no power in my legs at all. And it's damn heavy. Very heavy, yeah. So frustrating when you see all the rest going away from you. And then I'm there. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to come back into this now. Keep smiling. Yeah. They're supposed to walk, not run. Um, I think the speed of that event came from pure fear. This is what I was really dreading that event. I don't like it. It's not really good to me in the past. Um, if I had to do it again straight away, I might even do it faster because I was so scared from the start of it. Well, I don't think any of the strong men would look forward to doing it twice, let alone once. Fraser Tranter, part of our next heat of five strong men. Fraser, six foot nine inches tall from Wolverhampton. Adrian Rollinson, first timer in Britain's Strongest Man final. Rob Dixon, the human dynamo from York. Russ Bradley, a former winner of this competition, coming back into form. Steve Brooks, second in the final last year from Spennymoor. And that's the big fella. Fraser Tranter, the tallest man in Thank this year's final. Take your position. Douglas Edmonds, the referee. 18.7 seconds by Graham Mullins, the time to beat. Fraser Trander, a little bit of a problem even lifting the weight, but away we go. Russ Bradley starts off well. Steve Brooks struggling. Adrian Rollinson goes down, and so does Russ Bradley. And that leaves Rob Dixon coming away. He never stops fighting. He's the shortest man in this group. But what a time. He's beaten Graham Mullins time by far. Adrian Rollinson in second place. Russ Bradley third. Good start for Rollinson. Steve Brooks will be very disappointed with that. But Rob Dixon's time, 15.3 seconds. Unbelievable. Tranter in last place. What a fantastic start for Rob Dixon. I was OK. I mean, I have trained on this type of thing before. Uh, but mine, mine actually made me a bit more awkward. So I don't know if I can handle mine, I can handle these, which are perfectly balanced. So uh, I had my fingers crossed for top three. And uh, Milado, Edo dropped it. Well, I'll do my, I'll keep my head in there. Uh, so I was chuffed with that result, very chuffed, yeah. I think I was quicker than Graham as well, so it's pretty good, yeah. Well, that's a good start, eh? Yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah. Yeah, just slipped, just slipped off my back, just halfway up the course. I think I could have pushed the win that, but no more than a mistake. But it's still the early stages. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Rob Dixon may have won the first battle, but the war has only just begun. So here we go with event two, head to head in the car lift, just the 1,200 kilograms. Lift it up for as long as you can until you're exhausted. I'll tell you who's good at this, my mate Jack. Well, the first two men to go were Andrew Rains and Steve Brooks, who both won their heats in this discipline. Brooks had enough just before 1 minute 40, but Rains, as he had in his heat, looked as though he could stand there forever. One minute 50. 
but as two minutes dawned, he decided it was time to give it a break. Two minutes. And next after them were Glenn Ross and Brian Bell. Glenn Ross looking steady as a rock, and this is an event he would love to win. Well, I'm not sure what that was all about from Brian Bell, but certainly giving Glenn Ross something to think about it, and the crowd too. Well, they both know the time they've got to beat. Two minutes, 0.3 seconds, 120.3 by Andrew Raines. That's Jackie, Brian Bell's wife. Come on, Brian. Good time by both of them, heading towards a minute. Oh, and he's gone. He was looking so good. And just over a minute for Brian Bell, 61.6. So Glenn Ross, the defending champion, is the only man left standing at the moment. Now, he was just short of two minutes in the heats. He did win his heat in this event. But having seen Andrew Raines look so comfortable at two minutes, he's got a lot of work to do. Oh, he's wobbling just a little bit. Jamie Reeve in attendance in the black T-shirt there. Former World Strongest Man from Sheffield. One of the organisers of this event. Watching him very closely. That's Martin Campbell. That's Glenn Ross's wife too. Yvonne, his wife, all was there, and Glenn Ross is saying, don't worry, it's okay. Now, is he going to beat Andrew Range? Yes, he is. He's gone into the lead. So, big points for Glenn Ross, surely, in this event. Still a few more competitors to go, but what an effort by the man from County Down. He's trying to do as much as he possibly can now. His arms will be burning. His arms seem to be growing by the minute as well. The pressure of 1,200 kilograms, mainly on the wrist because of the lifting straps. Two minutes, 30 seconds, unbelievable. And he's gone down, 2.32. I can't see anybody beating that. Congratulations to Glenn Ross, a magnificent effort. He's the daddy! Well, for the time being, Glenn Ross is, no doubt about that. I started to get a bit dizzy, so I sat down, because I wasn't trying to save myself for the bus. If it was the last event, I would have pushed it further, but it's not. So, happy enough. Adrian Rollinson had some bad luck. His straps broke at 1 minute 27. Russ Bradley, deep in thought, didn't help him though. Fraser Tranter, his face tells his story. And Mal Kay, taking deep breaths, determined to avoid that bottom spot. I'm really chuffed to beat Fraser because he was second to last and I was last, now we're even last. I need to start making my way up the board again. <laughs> That's not very good English, is it? I need to start making my way up the board a bit, if I can. The last pair, Graham Mullins on the right-hand side. And next to him, Rob Dixon, the winner of the first event. Just making sure they're ready. They're strapped onto the car and the clock starts. Well, we've seen two incredible efforts. Andrew Raines, just over two minutes. And then Glenn Ross, the defending champion, 152 seconds exactly. Rob Dixon, one of the shortest men in this final, and a comparative lightweight at 19 and a half stones, but he moves so well, and he's got an incredibly strong back. Graham Mullins, 6 feet 5 inches tall, over 25 stones in body weight. You can see the difference in stature between two of them. And Graham, who's appeared as a gladiator in the blockbuster film Gladiator this year. This is all about determination. There's no posing going on here. And Rob Dixon struggling just a little bit. Mullins looking fairly composed. It's going to be interesting at the top of the leaderboard after this event. They both want to beat each other, that's for sure. They can't beat Glenn Ross, surely, or Andrew Raines if it comes to that. Heading towards 80 seconds now. 
They've got to go past Adrian Rollinson, 87.7, to get big points. And Steve Brooks at 99.4. That's 90 seconds gone. Look at Rock Dixon. Well, I have to say Mullins looking the most comfortable between the two of them. And Dixon is gone, and so is Mullins. That was so, so close. But it's still very good points indeed. 103.4 for Mullins. 102.7 for a dispirited-looking Rob Dixon. Graham, were you both just waiting for the other one to drop it? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, I was suddenly at one point, so I had a bite the paint on my arms. I had my pal Jamie Ball colouring names in the crowd. And I locked onto uh, Rob's left hand. I could see it getting longer and longer and longer. I'm thinking, go, go, go. Graham just hit the nail on the head. My left hand was slowly getting longer and longer. I thought, just keep on. If the straps could have held on, I think I would have beaten him, but they didn't. And he was looking at my hand, and I knew he was looking at my hand. There's nothing I could do about it. <laughs> so fair play to the big lad for beating me. But... Glenn Ross, like a rock, more than half a minute beyond everybody else. Reigns in second, Mullins in third. But what that means is the defending champion is right in there near the top of the leaderboard. There's just five points separating the top five. Well, planes, trains and automobiles, I know our strongmen have pulled all sorts of things over the years, but never before a double-decker London bus. And it's the perennial question, isn't it? Just how many children does it take to pull a London bus? Now, what do you reckon, Jamie? I've got no idea, but uh, let's give it a go. Let's start with 15. OK. Take the strain. After three, big pull. Ready? One, two, three, pull! Come on, pull! Maybe another five? One, two, three, four, five. OK, we're going to pull it this time. Yes! Come on, one, two, three, heave! Yay! Come on, keep it moving. Come on, keep it moving. And stop. Rope down. Yay! 20 kids, obviously too easy. So let's make things harder. First of all, we'll take some air out of the tyres. And as if that wasn't bad enough, all aboard. Well, goodness knows how much this bus weighs now. It's anybody's guess, but Brian Bell has the task of pulling it as fast as he possibly Brian, can down this course. Ready? Keeping tension on that rope is so important. Keeping a low body position and driving rather like a prop forward would do in a rugby scrum. Going well, especially over the first 10 metres. There's Jackie, his wife, as always, urging her men on. Both of them from Dundee in Scotland. Interesting choice of footwear as well. He's got climbing boots on just to try and get a bit of extra purchase. He's going very well. He's almost accelerating. The front of the bus must go past the line. Brian Bell, 32.3. Absolutely flat out. But what a performance by the Scotsman. That was a tremendous performance. Oh, well, I'm quite used to being in buses because that's my job. Driving buses, I felt at home there. But I had to really go for it to try and catch up the difference to stand a chance tomorrow. So was that the sort of time you were expecting to do? I knew by last year I can't pull, so I was hoping to be up there in the top ranking, so I think that'll be hard to beat. Russ Bradley found it tough, 40.9 seconds for him. Fraser Trant is the size of a double-decker bus, he found it awkward as well. And real bother for Mal Kay. It took him almost a minute. Our next big fella is Steve Brooks, and what a pair of shoulders this guy has got. Shame he's wearing a T-shirt in a way. He's got arms the size of coconuts. He's got a back as broad as that bus, and he's moving his legs pretty well too. 21 and a half stones of solid muscle and chasing this magnificent time by Brian Bell of 32.3. He's trying to keep it straight as well, which is so important. Keep an eye on the clock. This is fast. The front of the bus has to go across the line. 
of Steve Brooks, seventh in the first event, fifth in the second. He needs good points here. He's outside Bell's time, but it's still good. 36.3. He's in second place. That's his best performance so far. <sighs> What's the hardest thing about that? It's about halfway through. The legs start to pump up. You can't feel legs. You just go into like automatic pilot. All the, the years of training, truck pulling, and you just got to keep that rhythm going. It's extremely hard. You can say that again. Adrian Rollington took 70 seconds to pull his bus. Andrew Rains, low to the ground, 55 seconds for him. Rod Dixon, that's a bit better, 43.8. Glenn Ross, that's even better, 42.1. Well, I think Graham Mullins' body weight is going to help him here. He's the second heaviest man in this final, next to Glenn Ross. The pair of them, well, if you added their weight together, you come up with a total of almost 60 stones in body weight. That is absolutely massive. Now, Graham Mullins will be anxious to make sure he keeps one eye on the clock to beat Rob Dixon's time of 43.8. They came into this event tied together at 17 points each. He's not staying as low as some of the other guys, but because of this big body weight he has, this bulk that he's got, which he's using well, I don't think it's going to matter. Brian Bell still safely in first place, Steve Brooks safely in second, but he stops the clock now, 41 seconds dead. He's in fourth place, just outside Russ Bradley's time, and more importantly, he's beaten Rob Dixon. Brian Bell, he can pull anything. He won the lorry pull last year and the boss pull this. A good result for Steve Brooks and for Russ Bradley. But there's only six points separating the top five. Graham Mullins ruling the roost at the moment. Yeah, yeah, we're pleased with that. I'll sleep a lot better than I did last night. I didn't sleep at all last night. Nine seconds now. We're there. One more bad event. That's a loading event for me to come. And then after that, it's all good. Hopefully we can go and do it again. So here we go with event four, the loading race. An old friend, five disparate objects to be placed on the wall up here. Starting off with that sack, that's 95 kilograms and that goes here. The barrel's 105 and that goes here. The log is 115 and that goes here. And then the really tricky, awkward anchor is 105 kilograms and that goes here. And then finally, as if that wasn't enough, that really horrible chain, 200 kilograms, has to be placed here. By the end of it, they'll have carried getting on for three quarters of a tonne. Endurance is all part of this event as well, and these two big fellas may find it difficult. They've certainly got height on their side, six foot four Mal K, six foot nine inches Fraser Tranter, and both well over 20 stones in body weight. This first object shouldn't be a problem. They've both got the height, 95 kilos, 15 and a half stones. Fraser Tranter, the fastest, Mal K. Well, we heard how he hates coming last in any event. And in a competition like this, which is head-to-head, -head, he'll certainly be watching Fraser Tranter. 105 kilos. It's got to be placed on its end, and Fraser Tranter's got problems. Mal K moves ahead. This is tricky. 115 kilograms, 17 stones. Mal K moves ahead, even further ahead now, Fraser Tranter. Tranter on his shoulder. Well, he didn't have to lift it very high, did he? This is not particularly heavy, but it is awkward, and Mal K is going well. His fitness is showing. Tranter. He just seems to have lost the edge a little bit. 200 kilos, 440 pounds. That last link must go on before the clock is stopped. Mal K is finished. What a good effort by the policeman from Scarborough. Now the Wolverhampton man on the chain, puffing, blowing, in oxygen debt, really struggling now. And he's run out of time. Four objects will count as Fraser Tranter's score here. What a good effort by Mal K. I was cracking at the chain, because I've seen him really struggle with that on TV. But it's not all that. I've been pulling cars with the handbrake on, 
to get practice in going backwards, so uh, Volvo's heavier than that. <laughs> now this was when Andrew Rain's lack of height really came into play. He had awful problems getting the anchor up. And even more bad luck for Adrian Rollinson. His log fell off and he had to put it up twice. One thing I flew in the green room back and I was unbelievable. Yeah, it started off so well in the heat. Everything's on pay shape now. Just gotta put it just put it behind me now and go for it. Brian Bell got all up in 66.7. And Russ Bradley only managed four. The anchor was his downfall. Steve Brooks, he's got to start producing the goods soon. And Rob Dixon, third place overall, but I don't think he's looking forward to this one. And what about the technique of getting that chain up at the end? Well, actually, that, that, that's going to be a worry, because last year, it wasn't the problem I'd get the chain up, it was getting my little 28-inch legs up on that platform. Um, that's the hard thing. It's when you get in there, it's getting that leg about stuttering. I was like, you know, man with a broken leg last year, <laughs> but I'm going to get it all. It's as simple as that. Take your grip. Ready. Well, I'm just wondering about getting the sack up as well, because Rob Dixon, well under six feet tall, but that is very quick. What a great start by Dixon. Steve Brooks, heavier and taller, and perhaps a little bit stronger, but Brooks showing him a clean pair of heels for the time being, but it's Brooks who goes into the lead now. Steve Brooks from Spennymoor in County Durham. This looks awkward. Rob Dixon trying to put it on in one movement, and he's done it. This is a cracking time by both of them. 66.7 seconds, the lead at the moment by Brian Bell for all five objects, and it's neck and neck. It's all down to the chain. Now, we heard Rob Dixon say he wasn't looking forward to this particular part of it. Oh, he's got problems. He did say he might have a problem there, and he was right. And Steve Brooks is catching him. He's moved ahead, and Steve Brooks has beaten him. 58.2, Steve Brooks in the lead, and Rob Dixon in second place. A cracking time. It was nip and tuck all the way. That was a serious race, Steve, wasn't it? Yeah. Better than the Formula One, wasn't it? <laughs> well, there's lots of overtaking, certainly. Were you, were you watching him? No. Concentrating on training partner Alan. Listening to the wife. She's tunnel vision. You were ahead for a while there, Rob. Yeah. Um, I thought I would have beat him, actually, but I did say before, if the legs could only get up on that platform the first time I was up to him, I was willing to quite, quite some way to chain. I just couldn't get my leg up there. I'm going to blame my dad for that. <laughs> Glenn Ross on this side and Graham Mullins. These two guys not built for endurance, but they've proved us wrong in the past. 58.2 the time to beat now by Steve Brooks. And Brooks with a fifth, a seventh and a second place does appear to be getting stronger as time goes on. Graham Mullins, the overall leader by two points from Glenn Ross. A very important stage in the competition. Ten points at stake for every victory, and Graham Mullins goes on. Well, Glenn Ross, I have to say, at 29 stones, seeing him jogging and lifting that 115 kilogram log onto his head, that was remarkable. He's actually moved ahead of Graham Mullins now. Under a minute is the target. I'm not sure they can beat that. A magnificent time by Steve Brooks, but they're going to fight every inch of the way. Now the chain. They're just about neck and neck. Graham Mullins, if anything, marginally in the lead, running out of time. When there's 16 seconds to go, first place is gone. They've gone past Rob Dixon's time as well. Chasing Mal Kay and Brian Bell, and it's going to be close. Mullins is finished now. Mullins finishes in fifth place. Glenn Ross finished to 74.2 in sixth position. What a cracking competition and what a victory by Steve Brooks. Glenn Ross, well, he's desperate to win this title for a second time. And the two heavyweights here have put on a great show. So a great result for Steve Brooks, runner-up in Britain's Strongest Man last year. 
just winning ahead of Rob Dixon and Brian Bell. And this really could go to the wire. There's just four points now separating the top five strongmen. This giant log lift is a real task for every competitor. Andrew Rains the first out. 300 kilograms it weighs altogether, but the pressure on the shoulders is round about 115 kilos. That's around 17 and a half stones, about the same as a big refrigerator. Take your position. The idea to lift it to arm's length as many times Four. as possible. Left. The referee is going to be very strict One. about this. He'll tell them arm's length, two, two and down to the shoulders, a little push Three. with the legs as well. Four. Andrew Rains almost perfectly built for this sort of exercise. He's got massive arms. His biceps are about the same as most people's legs. They're massive. Now, what do you expect from a former bodybuilding champion and a powerlifter as well? Eight repetitions. Catherine, his wife, shouting and screaming for just one more. This is the target for everybody else. Can he do one more? It could be the important one. Not quite. But that was a very good effort indeed for Andrew Rains, one of four Yorkshiremen in this final, and it's eight that everybody has to beat. Fraser Tranter managed nine repetitions. Mal Kay, though, he found it nigh on impossible, just the two. On the board, please. Glenn Ross really fancies his chances in this event. Last year in the final, he broke the world record, a slightly different log on that occasion. Four, please. Left. Oh, he's not even using his legs. That is a straight press out. This man is a monster when it comes to this sort of strength. He's making it look so, so easy. Five repetitions are going well. The sixth one coming so quickly. And number seven. Well, if he keeps going at this rate, nobody will live with him on this exercise. But I have to say that if he wants to retain his title, two events left after this one, he's got to make his move now. The first man to go into the teens may be. Two to go, a little push with the legs this time. He's tiring. He seems to have hit the proverbial wall. Now, this is a big surprise. I was expecting a lot more from Glenn Ross somewhere around about 19 or even 20. What has he got left? There's still some good guys to come. He's in the lead for sure. He might have to sweat it out a bit along with his wife and all his supporters here at Alton Towers. One more possibly no. His target is big. It is 13. But I just wonder how happy he's going to be with that one. He's shaking his head. He doesn't look happy at all. How's that? Sorry, that was rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Well, I'll just have to see what the rest do now. And hopefully, I'll still get the win. Why, why was it so bad? I think it was just a big shock, the weight. I think everybody's had a shock at how hard it was. Good enough to win, though, don't you think? We'll see. We'll see. Russ Bradley, out of contention, really. Just the three repetitions for him. Adrian Rollinson, perhaps rather surprisingly, just seven. But even more of a turn-up, Graham Mullins, one of the favourites for the title, managed just five. Well, Brian Bell is a former champion powerlifter, and his speciality was bench press, where he was a world record holder. So this exercise could be well suited to the Scot. Take your position. Come on. Come on. He's certainly in contention for the title, but needs three good events in a row. 13 still the target by the mighty Glen Ross from County Down. He's got much longer arms than Glen Ross. He's got further to push, but he's a very accomplished weightlifter. Six looking fairly easy. Endurance is a big factor here. 
They're all big on a single lift or a double lift, but when it comes to repetitions, they're finding it difficult. Tremendous support, as always, for Brian Bell. Now, come on, one more for 10. Oh, he can't do it. Equals second place with Fraser Trander, but Glenn Ross still leads. Steve Brooks, a magnificent physique this guy has got. He's broad in the shoulder. He's got massive arms. And Steve Brooks second last year. In second place, behind the equal first places before this event, Graham Mullins and Rob Dixon. What a surprise Mullins' target was. Five only. And that, I think, has damaged his chances of lifting this title. Brooks going well. Looking to the heavens for some sort of inspiration. He's heading towards second place, I think. He needs nine repetitions for that. Equal. And he goes ahead. Can he catch Glenn Ross? Oh, come on. He's got another go at it. Just compose yourself. Big push from the legs. He can't quite do it. But that looks as though it's going to be good points for Steve Brooks in second place for the time being. Can anybody get close to Glenn Ross? I don't think they can. I suppose nine was what you really had to beat, wasn't it? Yeah, I was chasing Glenn though, but once it goes, it goes. Can't do nothing about it. He said he was surprised by actually how heavy it was, were you? It was very heavy, yeah. Obviously it's the world standard now, and that's what we need us British lads to stop the Scandinavian rule. So you happy with that? Ask us tomorrow. I'm not happy yet. Well, I hope he is smiling tomorrow. Steve Brooks, of course, referring to the domination of World's Strongest Man by the Finns and by the Swedes in recent years. Now it's all down to Rob Dixon from York. The last man to go. Equal first place at the moment with Graham Mullins, but Mullins has lost points on this event, that's for sure. Well, we've referred in the past to the fact that Rob Dixon looks fit to explode when he's producing big efforts. What has he got left? Two events to go after this one. We're heading to a fantastic climax of Britain's Strongest Man and the destiny of the trophy. Well, it's in anybody's hands at the moment. Heading towards Brian Bell's total of nine quite comfortably. Now, can he go past Steve Brooks? He's only a point ahead of him overall. If he can get 11, that will be two points ahead at least after this event. Now he's chasing Glenn Ross. I said before this event, nobody could beat the man from County Down. We need one. Oh, he's lost it. He's lost it at the last. But 13 puts him level with Glenn Ross for first place. And I tell you what, Steve Brooks won't be smiling after this event, but Rob Dixon certainly is. So how close were you to that 14? Um, it would be nice to beat Glenn, wouldn't it? Because he's, uh, he's the big press around here. But uh, I'm settled to draw with that man. He's one of the best his country's got. So I'll settle for a draw. Did you always feel at 13 that if you'd taken a, taken a breath and paused, you might have got the 14? I did, yeah. But uh, it wants to be. There's no point in chewing, because uh, I'm happy with that, you know. I would have never expected to equal Glenn pressing, but uh, there you have it. Rob Dixon, a tremendous result for him. He and Glenn Ross sharing first place. But Graham Mullins, back in eighth, was his goose well and truly cooked by the log lift. Daylight for Dixon, and just two events left. Well, you saw this for the first time in the heat, but now this could be the event that whittles our five remaining potential winners down to three, two, maybe just the one. Five massive poles ranging in weight from 200 to 300 kilograms to be picked up, pushed up, and then pushed over. They're called the Fingal's Fingers, but today they've become the Five Fingers of Destiny. And this is serious stuff now. Eyes on the prize. I've got to do the business now. I mean, I'd like a top four place, realistically, to give me a good shout on the tyre push. As far as the overall competition is concerned, uh, you must have thought overnight that I can win this now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got one hand on the trophy already. Hopefully, at the end of the day, I'll have two hands on. There's certainly five boys in for a shout. Three of us more of a shot than the other two, maybe. But we can, um, I think 
think I've had a knuckle down, I can do it. Is it right you're going to wear a helmet for this? I don't know. It's not because I want to do anything different. I just want to, you know, it's wet. You can see it's raining. I just want to get stuck in and like, I was a bit nervous in the heats. I want to give it rock all, but, um, you know, it would make me feel a little bit more confident if I put some sort of skid lid on. So it fell on my head. It wouldn't bloody knock me out, basically. Would it, would it make any difference to you if it fell on your head? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people would agree, no. <laughs> Well, I hope it doesn't come to that. Certainly conditions could not be worse for this event. Russ Bradley on this side and Brian Bell from Dundee. Brian Bell, very experienced, but has never really taken away the big titles. Russ Bradley, the former champion, coming back into form. The grip is going to be so important here. It's soaking wet underfoot. And the Fingal's fingers, the first of which weighs 200 kilograms, very, very slippery. And Bradley sensibly wearing gloves. Brian Bell, on to number two, 225 kilograms, that's close to 500 pounds. Bradley just in the lead. Brian Bell on the far side, an outside chance in fifth place of taking the title, but it would require a superhuman effort, especially here. Three is the maximum that anybody has achieved so far here at Alton Towers, but Bradley is ahead of Brian Bell. Both have got three, but Bradley was the quickest. Now this would be incredible if Russ Bradley, the former champion, in fact goes out. I was going to say, if anybody could get four, Brian Bell can't either. So the target is the time that Russ Bradley has set for the three fingers, and that was 31.3. Graham Mullins, what about that last event, the log lift? It really destroyed his chances of catching this man and maybe taking the title away from him. Glenn Ross, head to head with the gladiator Mullins from Rotherham. Take your grip. Not a bad target to go for either. Russ Bradley, three in 31.3. Well, Mullins, 33 points in total. That's six and a half behind the leader, Rob Dixon, at the moment. I'm not sure he can catch the man from York. The big story, though, is can Glenn Ross close the gap and go into the last event and win the title again? Mullins a shade behind Glenn Ross at the moment, but both men now on their third, 250 kilos. That is over 500 pounds. A massive weight. Balance aim, but look at that. Together, but Ross touches down slightly ahead. A good time by Glenn Ross. But slightly behind the lead of Russ Bradley at the moment. But look at this. Can Mullins do four? It would be incredible if either man could achieve it. Mullins, if he gets four, could even win this event overall and bring himself back into real contention with one event to go. Ross is struggling. Mullins has done it. That is a fabulous effort by one of the men from Yorkshire. The quartet from Yorkshire have done us proud here. Graham Mullins leading the way at the moment. Five seconds left for Glenn Ross. I don't think he can do it. What an effort by Graham Mullins. A disaster in the last event, but he's come back on song here. Well, that's put the cat amongst the pigeons a bit, hasn't it? I have a good feeling about this event. Very, very tough, though. Very tough. I was... Hit and miss about the fifth one, but it just totally drained. But it feels good now. What was the tactic there? To get the three up as quick as you could and then see about the fourth or what? <sighs> no, pace. Definitely pace. I'm too heavy to sprint. Just got to pace myself and make sure I've got four. Well, certainly we've never seen a sprint of the size of any of these guys on an athletics track. Steve Brooks full of contemplation about what is to come. He needs a big effort here. Two and a half points behind Rob Dixon. 39 and a half points in the lead with just two events to go. He's never fancied his chances in this event, though. This could be do or die for Rob Dixon. Steve Brooks just a little bit quicker than the man from York. Dixon completes the 200 kilogram Fingal's finger. On to number two. Threw that one up. That was easy. Brooks looking good. Chasing the lead, Graham Mullins, remember, completed four, just under one minute, Dixon finishes two. Steve Brooks is a massive man. He's struggling with the third one, though, he's letting Dixon back in. Now, I think you can see from that picture, the fact Rob Dixon is well under six feet tall. 
that will not help him at all in this event and Steve Brooks is just watching the progress that Dixon is making and Dixon is finished I think his chances of taking the title have been shattered there it wasn't a great performance either by Steve Brooks but if he could get this one it would make a lot of difference no he's finished and what a difference this is going to make to the overall leaderboard my goodness we've really got a contest on our hands where did it go wrong there? Just ran out of steam, basically. I got stuck halfway down the pole. And with that weird bearing down on top, you just seems you're sinking into the ground all the time. But, uh, I was lucky to finish the third one, actually. It was very heavy. I, was I thought I was moving pretty quick between them. But just like I say, the third one took its toll. Last event again. What about you in the tire flip? <sighs> I'm saying nothing. I'm saying nothing at all. Just watch and pray. I'm in third position now, so I'll settle for that at the moment. He <laughs> just bust balls now. Let's go for it. Can you win it on the tire flip? Well, it's anybody's game. I'm off for it. You've seen all this competition. I've never slapped up once, never. So you can guarantee I'm off for this, you know, like everybody else. But, you know, I see who's got it most. And who wants it most? Well, I want it. A bad result for Dixon. Graham Mullins back in contention. Steve Brooks may have lost it there. Glenn Ross is the man to beat. I knew today was tactics was involved in it and three fast ones. I got my third place sir. Beat Steve because I knew he hadn't done it in the heat. So I knew he was up against it. And Rob, well it wasn't a very good event for him because of his height. So like I say, I went down to tactics, getting a good place, and I've done it. So just hopefully do the same again in the tar. Um, I think they need to beat him by a couple of places. Uh, that's Graham and four places for Steve Brooks. Glenn Ross, spot on as ever with his assessment. He's just one event away now from retaining his title as Britain's strongest man. A familiar sight for these strong men. The 300 kilogram tyres have got to be flipped down the course in the fastest possible time. The first five men have already taken their turn. Now it's down to our top five. Brian Bell. Steve Brooks from Spenny Moore, second overall last year. Rob Dixon, a real surprise package this time round. Graham Mullins, well, he led early on in this final. And Glenn Ross, aiming to retain the title. He won at Alton Towers last year. Everybody will keep an eye on Glenn Ross. Here we go. Steve Brooks would have to beat Glenn Ross by two clear places. Rob Dixon to beat him by four. And that would be an incredible effort for this fella from York. But he's struggling here. He led manfully earlier on in this final. Mullins did too. Oh, Mullins has gone. He's struggling. I think he may have injured himself. Ross is leading. What a finish by the man from County Down. Complete with supporters club. I think Ross may do it. He's come from behind all the way, but he's beginning to struggle now. Steve Brooks bristling with muscle, knows he's got to win this one big time and beat Glenn Ross by two clear places, but I don't think he's going to beat him by two. They're level pegging at the moment, unless something happens to the man from County down here. This guy always does his homework. He did it before this event. He'll know what Steve Brooks is doing, but it's not bothering him. He glanced across there. It doesn't matter. If he can flip it one more time, he'll retain the title. Come on, Steve Brooks. A little bit of glory. The last bit of glory, though, will go to Glenn Ross. He's the daddy once again. He's done it against the odds in some respects. The time does not matter one bit. Glenn Ross has won this final event. He's won the trophy, and now he's going to take the plaudits of this crowd here at Alton Towers. This guy really is a gentle giant, but he's a vicious competitor once he gets going. Being congratulated by Rob Dixon. What a couple of days he's had. He's looking for his wife. She'll be the first one to congratulate the big fella. I love you, love you. Lovely moments for Glenn Ross. It's one thing winning a championship for the first time, but it's doubly difficult to retain the title. What a moment and what a performer. He's going to be congratulated now by Martin Campbell. 
his training partner, and he aspires to be a world's strongest man one of these days. That comes next for Glenn Ross. He's off to Sun City. Yes! And this is little Marcus. He yes! looks tiny at his father's giant hands. But his dad is a champion once more. I just know I could win this one. If I was, I'm going to be second anyway. And Steve Brooks put on a magnificent oh, bow. And uh, Graham Mullins and Rob Dixon and Bram Bell. They're all there at the end. And uh, we all wanted the title. I'm just glad I got out, you know. Second again. I know I can't break the rhythm, can I? So I'm happy now. I've had to fight through the heat, as you saw. Had a few bad events in the final as well. And we placed this place second. It's been a hard, tough one. It's been a very tough competition, very tight. On the last event, anybody could have won, but I've came up three places from last year, so naturally I've got to be happy with that. Do you think the standard's gone up, Steve, from yeah, last year? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, last year, we thought it was tough. This year has been that next step higher. Oh, big lad won it again. I'm chuffed for him. You know, to win something twice in a row. Fair play to Big Glenn. But you're smiling, but you must be thinking, damn. Hey, it's hard work, but, you know, I've got beat by better guys. So, that's back in, get stuck back in. I've improved since last year. So, the year, you know, who knows? I'm still smiling, yeah, because I'm tough. But I did last year, anyway. But Glenn Ross winning it in style, the only man to get to the end of the course. And Steve Brooks in second place, as he was last year. Glenn Ross. Can he prove that being Britain's strongest man means he's a serious contender for world's strongest man? So, three times in a row next year? Wait till next year. <laughs> Let me just enjoy this year's again. But the world's strongest man beckons. This time, I will beat Sven Carson. There'll be no, there'll be no running game going to put me out. And uh, I'll go on. There's a whole out now. World's strongest man's anybody's. And I'm definitely going to be there. And finally, the big one. Britain's strongest man for the year 2000, the winner of the Citroen Vans Trophy, Glenn Ross. And so Mark Raven, the Director of Communications for Citroen UK, presented the trophy to the man from Bangor, all 28 stone of him, who'd retained his title. A charismatic figure on the strongman stage in this country, he's now looking forward to the big challenge ahead in South Africa. After that, I was concentrating now as I'm world's strongest man. So where is it to Sun City? Sun City. I think it's this way, actually. You know, they talk about the big five, actually, out in Africa. You know, uh, yeah. rhino, tiger, lion, giraffe. I reckon with you out there, big six. 